Good afternoon, everyone. We are now on the record and we're video streaming. I'm Dwight Keenan. I'm chair of the Kansas Corporation Commission. I'm joined <clears throat> this afternoon by my fellow commissioners, Susan Duffy and Commissioner Andrew French. At this time, I'm calling this evidentiary hearing to order in docket number 22-CONS-3367-CUIC. This is in the matter of the application of Apollo Energies Inc. as operator for a permit to authorize enhanced recovery of salt water into the Bowers number one well, located in the northeast quarter of section three, township 28 south, range 11 west, Pratt County, Kansas. Let's uh, start this afternoon with the entries of appearance and I'll begin with the operator. Rob Eisenhower on behalf of the operator Apollo Energies Inc. who appears also by its president, Jim Byers. Thank you. Council for protesters. Thank you, Chairman Keene. Uh, this is Josh Nicolay from the law office of Stolen Beverly out in Pratt. With me here in my office, I have protesters, uh, Lawrence, Larry Pricer, and Tracy Chambers. All right, thank you. And Council for the Commission staff. Yes, good morning, Commissioners. Kelsey Marsh on behalf of Commission staff and the public generally. Very well. Does the staff have any recommendation regarding the notice for this hearing? Yes, notice of this hearing was contained in the presiding officer's November 3rd order setting an evidentiary hearing in this docket for Monday, December 5th, 2022 at 12 o'clock p.m. via the Zoom video conferencing platform. The presiding officer's order was properly served on the parties. I would also note that both the applicant and protesters and their counsels are in attendance today. Additionally, applicant published notice of the evidentiary hearing in the Wichita Eagle on November 16th, 2022, and the Pratt Tribune on November 23rd, 2022, in compliance with KAR 82-3-135. Therefore, staff believes that notice is proper and that the commission has the jurisdiction to hear this matter at this time and place. Are there any objections to notice? We don't have any objection to notice. Thank you. Hearing none, uh, and based upon the staff's recommendation, I find that notice is proper and that the commission has jurisdiction over the, this proceeding at this time and place. Let's move now to preliminary matters, and then I'll discuss briefly the procedures for the hearing. First, we are conducting this hearing over Zoom, and uh, sometimes things can go wrong. If any party encounters a technical issue, please just ask to go off the record so that we may resolve the technical issue before going back on the record. Second, witnesses are asked to keep their microphones muted or off when they are not scheduled to speak. And if everyone would uh, please mute your cell phones, phones in their offices and other electronic devices, that would be uh, much appreciated also. Third, so that the parties are aware if the commission needs for any reason to consult amongst ourselves, we will go off the record and the commission will enter into what's basically called a Zoom breakout room. <clears throat> then we will return from the breakout room and go back on the record if necessary. Finally, since we're doing this by Zoom, please be especially careful to identify exactly what you're referring to when you're discussing your pre-filed testimony, documents, or other filings. We have copies of all of that on hand so that we should be able to follow along if you will pro provide us with some assistance in, in identifying those matters. Now, do the parties have any other preliminary matters they wish to take up at this time? Uh, Commissioner Rob Eisenhower, uh, off the record, uh, when you began recording, there was something that showed up on my screen and I, I hit got it and I no longer can hear anyone or see anyone, but I can hear everyone. And the people that set this up for me are no longer here because they're uh, eating lunch. I don't have any objection going forward exactly the way we're doing it. I don't know whether you can see me, but I can't see you. Reisner, we can see you. Okay. And uh, uh, you're in your office setting. And uh, okay. if, uh, as long as you can hear us, uh, perhaps when your colleagues return, they could restore that. I, I don't have a clue as to how to do it myself. And I don't believe we can from a distance do that. Okay. That's fine. But, uh, if you're comfortable, we, we can, we can indeed hear you. We can see you as well. Okay. Um, okay. Um, any other preliminary matters? Very well. Uh, with regard to procedure for the hearing, uh, parties are typically allowed to make opening statements. After opening statements, we will have, of course, the examination of witnesses. 
After the direct examination of each witness, there is an opportunity for cross-examination, commission questions, and redirect. Any further uh, examination will be at the discretion of the commission. Following witness examination, the parties typically make closing statements and arrange for the filing of post-hearing briefs if uh, requested or necessary. And then we conclude the hearing. All right, with that, uh, all the procedural uh, matters uh, behind us, let's turn to our opening statements. And I'll begin first with Mr. Eisenhower. Commission, uh, we're here on an application of Apollo Energies uh, to basically allow uh, the Bowers number one well to be uh, an injection well for the, cunning, uh, for the unit, which covers all of section 32811. We believe that uh, we have satisfied all the requirements of the regulations uh, according to uh, staff's recommendation, uh, specifically uh, page three of their uh, pre-filed testimony. We have uh, completed the cement bond log uh, December 2nd and have filed a amended U8 form together with the MIT, which was done in January of 2022. Uh, therefore, uh, we agree with the testimony of Julie Schaefer that uh, uh, the application should be permitted. And, and as a side matter, this well was approved for an injection well a number of years ago, and we believe uh, it's proper to uh, uh, permit the, this application to go through with the order of the commission. All right, thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Nicolay, please. Thank you, uh, commissioners. I mean, I guess the kind of the long and short from my client's standpoint here, they're, they're the landowners. Um, they have been living with this well on their property now that has remained unused essentially for approximately 20 years now. Um, the commission had previously denied a temporary abandonment application of Apollo Energies in, in seeking an 11th year of temporary abandonment status for this well. That application was denied um, and Apollo Energies was ordered uh, by the, K the KCC to either bring the well into production or have it plugged by the 24th of December, 2021. It was only after uh, that date had run that Apollo had filed its application to convert this into a injection well. Um, my, my clients uh, disagree with the reasons for which uh, Apollo Energy has indicated they need to convert this well into a injection well. Um, they believe this is an attempt to try to um, avoid having to incur the cost of plugging this. And so they would ask that the commission deny the application today and require Apollo Energies to uh, plug and abandon this well. Uh, they, they additionally have concerns that given the conversion of this well to a saltwater injection well, it would potentially jeopardize their what they're currently using the property for, which is a uh, which is an irrigated uh, farm ground. They're concerned with potential contamination that may result uh, from hauling wa off-site water in um, to a, a, a pad location for the purposes of in injecting. All right, thank you. Uh, <clears throat> opening statement, Mr. Marsh. Yes, may it please the commission. Ball Energies, as we know, has filed an application requesting injection authority for its Bowers number one well. The protesters have expressed various concerns with the application and staff has attempted to address the concerns it could in its pre-filed testimony. As stated in staff's testimony, Apollo Energies needed to submit an amended U8 with the corrected section C, verify the status of the cement with the cement bond log, run on the Bowers number one well, and conduct a satisfactory staff witness MIT on the Bowers number one well. Uh, Apollo Energy seemed, seems agreeable to these requirements in its pre-filed testimony and provided staff with a cement bond log that was run this past Friday and an amended U8 that was uh, submitted this morning. 
however, staff has not had a chance to fully review the cement bond log or the amended U8 yet. Uh, once the, uh, and I'm unsure about the MIT being run. I know Mr. Eisenhower said that one was done in January. Um, I don't know that we've seen a record to that effect. Um, but assuming all those issues are resolved, then uh, staff believes that the application would meet all their statutory and regulatory requirements uh, to process the injection application um, and that the application could be granted at that time. Thank you. All right, thank you. I believe we've reached the point where we're now ready to proceed with the examination of witnesses. Mr. Eisenhower, I'll turn to you and you may call your witness. I call Jim Byers. Mr. Byers, if you would raise your right hand, please. Okay. You swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help you God or under penalty of perjury. Yes, I do. Thank you. Jim, would you state your name and address for the record, please? Yeah, James L. Byers, 10378 North US 281 Highway, Pratt, Kansas. And are you the president of Apollo Energies, Inc.? Yes. And I, I don't want to go through everything in your pre-filed testimony, but would it be a true statement that you've been in the oil field business since 1965? Correct. And you began work at that time for Clark Well Service, and uh, you now own and operate a number of wells in both Kansas and Oklahoma. Yes. Okay. And you have an operator's license in both Kansas and Oklahoma, is that correct? That's correct. And does your company operate over 200 wells in the state of Kansas? That's correct. Well, the Bowers number one well is located in the northeast quarter of 32811 Pratt County. Is that correct? I believe so. And uh, is it also correct that Braden Dean purchased this lease in 1970 and formed the Cunningham Water Flood Unit? That's correct. <laughs> And does that unit cover all of section 32811? Yes. And did Apollo Energies Inc. acquire this uh, unit in April of 1990? I can check my date, that sounds correct. And uh, from that date forward, have your has your company operated the Cunningham water flood unit on a profitable yes. basis? Yes, we have. And prior to uh, you acquiring the Cunningham unit, uh, had the buyer's number one well been approved in the past by the Kansas Corporation Commission as an injection well? Yes, Braden Dean, that was part of their water flood plan was to make it an injection well. Okay. And uh, did you later turn it into a producing well? We tried producing it for a while and without success, but we never really got it pumped totally down, but we gave up on the fact for a while. Okay. And are you now asking the Corporation Commission to uh, grant your application to uh, use the buyer's number one well as an injection well for the Cunningham water flood unit? Yes. And the original engineering plan, what that was the intent was to use it for an injection well. Okay. And have you done any research or geological studies or based on your mapping, do you believe uh, injecting salt water into the Bowers number one well will increase production of the unit? We believe it can and will. And also we hope to block the oil from being pushed off our lease. We, we don't, our other injection well is Southeast of this well. And we may be uh, pushing some oil off our lease. So this is, to help block the northeast corner. Okay, and you've attached as a, an exhibit to your pre-filed testimony a list of uh, three or four pages of royalty owners in this uh, Cunningham water flood unit, correct? Correct. And is Mr. Pricer one of those um, that, royalty owners? That's correct. And are you also one of those royalty owners? Yes. Has any other royalty owner uh, contacted you about uh, your application or filed any protests in this case? Not that I'm aware of. And have you and Mr. Pricer had a prior history um, 
with regard to your operation of wells on his property? Yes. And did Mr. Pricer destroy a pump jack uh, that was located in the irrigation circle? Well, he didn't necessarily destroy it, but he moved it off. He took it, he took it away. Okay. So were you unable to produce a well at that time? Uh, yes, we're out of the pump unit, we can't. Okay. Now, recently, when your grandson attempted to uh, run the cement bond log, were you told that, or was he told that he could not come on to this property? Yes, more or less. Well, what do you mean by more or less? Well, he said, told him, my grandson that a well wouldn't be taken, it'd be over his dead body for anybody to put salt water down that well. Okay. We took but, that as a threat. Okay. But on uh, last Friday, your uh, grandson, Josh Reneker, was able to do the cement bond law, correct? Yeah, correct. Okay. And uh, the amended U8 statement states that uh, under paragraph C that you will be bringing in water from the Yates 16-1, the Arnold 135, and the Studer A. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. Now, I referred to an MIT that was done on this well in January of 2022. Is that correct? Yes. Um, However, was it staff witnessed by the Kansas no, Corporation Commission? No, I look back. Uh, the next day or the day we had a, we shut the rig down. We had like zero weather, a very cold wind chill. And so we, we did an in-house inject the MIT on it. Okay. So if the KCC, uh, Kansas Corporation Commission staff uh, wants you to do a new uh, MIT on this well, witnessed by staff, you have no objection to that, do you? No, we've already sanded back uh, the well and to run the MIT, so that we're ready to MIT it, Casey okay. only. But until we run tubing in there and everything, then we'd have to do it again. So. Well, you can get our production string in there. We had to pull the production string, the work string out to do the bond log because okay. they needed to access to the five and a half casing. Will Apollo Energy uh, Inc. comply with any uh, requests, recommendations uh, made by the uh, Corporation Commission staff? Yes. And have you done any calculations as to increase revenue, which should be generated by using the Bowers number one well as an injection well? Well, part of the reason we're, we were, our other injection wells been used all these years and uh, we're, we'd like to take some pressure off it and then also block our, you know, since the well's there and it was uh, designed in the water flood uh, as an injection well, we think it, makes sense to go ahead and try it okay and you understand that whatever acreage will which will be needed uh in doing this work you will need to compensate the land compensate the landowners for that acreage correct yes okay. i think that's all i have jim okay all right, very well. Cross examination, Mr. Eisenhower. Or I'm, Mr. I'm sorry, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Nickel, my, my apologies. Nope, you're okay. Thank you. Um, uh, Mr. Byers, just to touch on a point that I got here in my head right now, um, you said you had to remove your production string in order to run your cement bond log. That's correct. So, so that, that well, it had a production string in it and it was at least capable of producing oil. Um, it was, it was equipped for it. Correct. It only, no, we didn't have a pump unit. Okay. And how we long did, is it? we produced it for a while? Okay. And when did you last produce that? Well, I would look at my notes real quick. Um, well, possibly 2013 have to look for sure. Okay. Do you know how much you, I mean, prior to, was it, was it consistently producing up to 2013 or was that just uh, like a one-off? Uh, 
Yeah. I believe I had to research a little more of it. Uh, if I had time, I would have had the answer, but uh, roughly from 2010 to 13, we tried producing it. Okay. Uh, it was producing, but all water, but we couldn't pump it down and it would require bigger pumping equipment. And the well was there before the irrigation system, but we've tried to uh, uh, comply with the irrigation system. Mr. Pricer about his irrigation. So therefore take a low profile or because he didn't want any irrigation ramps on his property. Okay. Do you happen to know the last time that that well produced any measurable quantity of oil? Just prior to me owning it, so they turned it into an injection well, so I wouldn't know. So sometime prior to 1990? Probably. Okay. Um, I don't when know did... when we bought the lease, but it was down when we bought it and was hadn't been, I don't know when they shut it down, but it was an injection well then when they initiated the water flood. Okay. Were you were you using it as an, as an injection well then? No. Okay. So... What were you using it for? When you acquired it in 1990, what was what was the well being used for? It had been shut in prior to us acquiring it, the lease. Okay. And so I guess I just want to make sure I'm, I'm understanding this correctly. You acquired this lease in 1990. And since that time, other than maybe a, a couple of attempts to try to bring this well into production, it's essentially sat unused, the Bowers number one. Well, we tried producing it, and because of, of the de our dealings with Larry Pricer, um, but, you know, it's not cordial to us to do any work there at all, especially when he threatens us. Okay. So that's uh, not good, good working conditions to send your employees out to or anybody. Okay. Um, I, I guess, though, I'm just trying to pinpoint here. It's been approximately 30 years that this has been an open hole that very little has been done with it. Now, the reasons for that obviously are in dispute here, but is that accurate? Well, I'm not, I have to look at the date when they turned it into a water flood. It was being used for a fresh water. It's a fresh water injection well at that time. And there's a, and I didn't want to use fresh water and put down it. I guess we could continue doing that. When you say a fresh water injection well, I mean, is there a, is there a fresh water source there that that well is tied into? It's not tied in now, but they drilled a fresh water well for that purpose. We never used it. Okay. Um, with your, with the Cunningham water flood program as you're currently operating it, um, how many authorized injection wells do you have? We're using one right now. Okay, do you the have one any that The one that was in use when we bought it. And we've maintained it. Okay. Are there any other wells in the in the unit that are authorized uh, for injection purposes, other than the than your current well, and then perhaps the Bowers number two that's at issue here? No, there aren't. Okay. Um, is 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 this water flood unit? I mean, is it per, is it reinjecting produced water, or are you bringing in off lease? Are you currently bringing in off lease water? Uh, for pressure maintenance purposes. Correct. We're bringing in off lease water plus its own produced water. Okay. And where are you bringing off lease water from? Well, the lease is mentioned mainly. Okay. So, so the the Yates, yeah. Arnold, and Studer, you're currently injecting water into your existing injection well. Yes. And then we have a couple we have used the uh, couple of Holland leases that are nearby. They're also in the Kansas City zone, same zone, uh, different area. Okay. And so that, but the Yates, Arnold and Studer, those are from the same zone um, that you're looking to inject into with the Bowers number one? The, the Yates is Mississippi and has uh, some Kansas City we may open up. Okay. Do you know about, I mean, currently how many how many barrels of salt water are you bringing in on a daily basis? No, it's not daily, but um, I'm guessing maybe 250 barrels a week to 300. Okay. 300, maybe 400, you know, kind of varies. Sure. Are you, are you anticipating that that's volume? A, that's a week, that, that, a week, three to 400 a week. Okay. Are you anticipating that volume of salt water? 
uh, to remain constant when you, if this application is permitted, are you intending to increase the volume of salt water that you're looking to inject? We intend to see what it'll take with uh, on vacuum. Yeah. The static fluid levels blow a thousand feet from the surface. So we don't think once it reached static fluid level, there's no way it'll contaminate fresh water. Okay. Even if it had holes or something. Okay. Um, with um, our, the, the three wells that you're intending on bringing water from, it, it, for the Bowers number one, I mean, are, is that the total amount of salt water that you're producing from those wells or you use, do you have another uh, injection well that you're using uh, in addition to this? No, that's, uh, well, we use, uh, we use it primarily for those, the, the ones I mentioned. Okay, okay. But we have another source of disposing also. Okay, um, and, and are you, Continuing to use that other disposal well. What was that? Yes, Are you, we do. You're continuing to use that other disposal well. Yes, but it's been used so many years, and we're bucking pressure there. And and when we have to shut down for repairs, we have no other. You know, we have to shut the lease down unless we haul water someplace else. Okay. But the prime, you know, we want to block our. You know, I'll re restate that we want to. All these years we've been putting water in that one well and we don't know how much oil we may have pushed off our lease. We'd like to block, block that boundary as an engineer is originally designed. Sure, and, and I'll, I'll get to that here in a moment. Um, I guess so what I'm trying to figure out is, I mean, the other wells that you're bringing water in to, uh, you know, to inject into your Cunningham water flood unit, the, those aren't, part of the Cunningham water flood unit, correct? That's correct. Okay. And so um, other than perhaps the benefit that comes from the uh, water flood or pressure maintenance program that you're operating, the, the landowners and the royalty owners, they don't see any of the benefit or any of the money that comes from these wells for which you're injecting the water. I disagree. Okay. Uh, I, I mean, uh, what what basis would you disagree? Well, you have to maintain your pressure. We're constantly pr producing oil and water. Uh, we don't know if we've ever made up the amount of water taken out of that lease since it drilled in 1942, as many years ago. So the water, the reason you do make up water, you know, is to replace the reservoir pressure. And, uh, you know, you might channel through one, you will probably channel through established a channel through our zone since we've been putting all the salt water in one well for, I don't, I'd have to look at how many years they've well, probably channeled through and bypassed some oil. Okay. And, and we may be pushing it off our lease. We don't know if the well's there now, why not try it? Okay. Let me, that was kind of a poor question. Let me ask this another way. The, the Yates, Arnold and Studer lease, the, the, the Pricers, Larry Pricer and Tracy Chambers are they receiving a royalty from any of those three leases? Not that I know of. Okay. I mean, you talked about a concern with, with oil though migrating off the Northern boundary here. Um, I mean, isn't that, hasn't that been a concern of yours though, since you acquired this in 1990? I mean, isn't the, the propensity for the oil migrating off due to injection, something that could have occurred from the get-go that wasn't a major concern when i bought the lease that over the years you know as we've gone on and the wells there and we tried to produce it we didn't it really get it pumped down uh, but don't know how long if ever we could produce it and, and make oil okay but wh why is right now though a concern with oil migrating off the lease as opposed to say 10 or 20 years ago no we haven't we would have done it 10 or 20 years ago, but Mr. Pricer has been a big ob obstacle. Did you make application to the KCC to seek authority to do that? To do what? To convert this well into an injection well? Well, as soon as we get it ready, we will, I believe. 
Uh, I, Josh, if, prior prior to this application, did you did you apply to the KCC? Uh, may have to ask Josh if he's there. If we started yet, we have. I mean, don't want to get the card ahead of the horse, you know. Well, it, we see no reason that that they deny it. I, I understand that, but I guess what I'm I'm trying to pinpoint here is if, if if you're saying that there's a concern with oil migrating off the lease, you know, and Mr. Pricer is you know, by, by your understanding, a difficult person to deal with. And he's always been a difficult person to deal with. Why right now do you feel it necessary to protect against migrating as opposed to 10 or 20 years ago? Well, I don't know. It came time to either plug the well or, or use it. And we would have put water in your years ago if it hadn't been for what we're running into with Mr. Pricer. And I knew that he would be a problem. Okay. So we, it was only when... When the corporation commission told you you had to do something with the well that you decided you needed to do something with it no we had done something prior to that okay when we tried to produce it when we did produce it economics has a lot to play in some of this you know when you in the oil business the price is up and down all over the place so sure but good business is good business i mean i guess if oil good might business, be strong, yeah if Good business is trying off. not to go broke. Good business is trying not to go broke when things are tough. So, okay. so we can't spend money we don't have when it, we can't justify the expense. Um, you indicate though that Mr. Pricer had had pulled a pumping unit off of his property that belonged to you. Is that correct? That's correct. And was it from this well or was it from another well? Another uh, well on that, what was it originally the same, the Bowers lease? There's Bowers one, Bowers two is off the Bowers number two, which is in the same quarter. Okay. Was that a, was that pumping unit, was that with, within the area of irrigation? Yes. Okay. And at and the time that pumping unit was removed, was it, was that well operational? We, yes, we had been operating and it has, was making oil. It might have been down for repairs that day. But I'm not sure. And so, how was he able to remove the pumping unit? Do you have any he, idea? Well, I guess he drug it off of his tractor. I wasn't there, so you might ask Mr. Pricer how he did it. Okay. Is uh is the Bowers number two? I mean, is it is it currently operational? We've just repaired the pumping unit, and I'll. I don't know if I should add this. We'd rather have a conventional pump unit on there. These low profiles are dangerous and probably have three times, four times the repairs of a conventional pump unit. But we put this low profile on there, which is prone to lots of problems. And uh, just so he wouldn't, we, I don't know if we could have just went ahead and pushed and put our pump unit in there. Conventional made him put in the ramps, but that hasn't worked out well either with us, with Mr. Pricer. Okay. Was this was this ground being irrigated before you acquired the property? I'm not sure about that. Uh, yeah. Do you know if the ground was being irrigated before this was converted into a uh, water flood program? I don't think it was. Okay. I was. I don't. You just have to ask Mr. Pricer. Okay. You indicate I was on the. I was on the lease in the. I worked for Scaly Oil, which turned into Getty, and that was those two buyers well worse. They were a Scaly lease, and we, both of them were making oil at that time. Okay. So you happen, there wasn't any ir irrigation then at all. Do you happen to know approximately when that was? I don't need an exact date, but maybe a year. Well, I went to work for Scaly in August of 66, and I quit in 85, and I believe they, I don't think there was, I'm not sure when uh you know, left Skelly and Getty, so I can't tell you about the timeline, but all this occurred. And then Braden Dean bought it from Skelly Getty in, in each day of the water flood. And I can look up the dates of that. Okay. Um, but we were making oil out of the number two, and I was, at, I, I'd love to have it run. I'd love to have a bigger pump unit on it. Was there, I mean, do you know how much water that number two was producing when you were producing? Yeah, about 120 barrels a day. 30, 40. Okay. Well, what was your cutoff of that? Well, we're making about two barrels of oil with it, two and a half. 
and we didn't have the well pump. We didn't have the food level pump down. And with Skelly Getty, I was around a lot of water flows. I was the engineering technician for a while, and I shot food levels and barrel tested till I became foreman. Um, and knowing how water flows react, when we found a lot of food in the hole, we, we would start putting in bigger pumps and see if we couldn't pick them up. Well, I saw one well go from two barrel oil a day to 500 oil. So that's, I don't expect that out of this lease, but that's the kind of romance involved in something like this. You'd like to try it. You, you indicated you believe that, you know, converting the Bowers number one into an injector well will hopefully result in an increase in production from the Cunningham unit. Um, what's your, I mean, what's your basis for that belief? Well, just being around water flow, just kind of draw a map and, and they have the zone drawn out. And if we want to, you know, give a push from this corner, like it was originally designed, that's what it was set up to do this well. You know, you, you start pushing the oil back towards your producers. Okay, Instead of pushing it off, at least. And, and I, I'm really not trying to belabor the point here. I guess I just want to make sure I understand this correctly. If this well that, that's the subject of your application is a well that was designed to be an injection well, um, is it your contention that the only reason Apollo has not used it as an injection well is because of the landowner, Larry Pricer? That's correct, 100%. Okay. Um, you know, I you mentioned that Larry Pricer told my employee that over his dead body before we'd put salt water on that well. So that makes us uncomfortable to go out there and do anything. We already knew he was like that. But, and then since he drug off our pumping unit years ago, who those aren't good working conditions. I hate to send employees out for you. Okay. Um, if this is converted into a, if, if your application is granted, um, what, what's the plan for um, converting this into a well? I mean, are you, is there sufficient roadway to access the well? Um, are you going to have to put in, um, what, what's your plan as far as like your, your water storage, facilities are concerned well um it's 330 feet off the county line road uh, so that's not far we can set a tank out there and miss the sprinkler system but i'd rather set it closer to the well and we'll keep it below the irrigation system unless mr pricer would put in ramps which would be nice but i don't expect that to happen so we're i think we're going the extra mile to try to work with mr pricer and i don't think how many miles we'd go would matter I think it'd still be difficult. Uh, well, we, we'll make it where it's compatible with the sprinkler system, but we have to have, be able to truck water in there. So we either have to set the tank out from under the sprinkler system, which we can do, but it'd be nicer to have it closer to the well. Okay. Is this location, um, is this in close proximity to Mr. Pricer's residence? It's north of his house. Okay. About how far north is uh mr pricer's residence from the existing wellhead i'm just guessing 400 feet 500 he would know better than me i never had a reason to measure that okay do you have any idea the distance between um his domestic his household water supply well and your uh this the bowers number one wellhead what was that the, the the distance between his his residential water well and and the existing Bowers number one well. Producer, do I know yes. the distance? Yes. No, I don't. Um, do you know the distance between the Bowers number one well and uh, Mr. Pricer's irrigation well? No, I don't know that for sure. Do you, do you know where no. Mr. Bowers irrigation well, I mean, like, you know where it's located? Uh, not exactly, I guess. That'd be a question for him, I think. Okay. The, the, his house was put there after all these wells were drilled. So he knew where the wells were. This well was there in 1942, I believe. Okay. 1943, October 1943, it came in as a producer. Okay. Um, 
do you know about how many, I mean, ha, ha, what's the surface footprint going to look like for the, your proposed operation here? Well, we'll have a wellhead. We'll have to have tubing in there. So that stick up three feet, maybe. Uh, and we'll have to have a water tank there to haul the water into. We could put in a six foot tall tank. I'd rather put in a 10 foot tall tank. Gives us a little better working conditions for the well. So we don't suck it down too low. We can leave a little more fluid in the tank so we don't suck air. You don't want to do that or, or suck something off the top of the tank. Okay. Either and a 10 foot tank or a six foot tank. Then it'll, it'll, like I said, we'll make sure it's underneath the sprinkler system unless we can have to set it out beyond the sprinkler system. Okay. Um, will you need to create a roadway or anything we'll like that? Yes. Wouldn't have to be real big, but okay. depends on where they're. Go ahead. I'm depends sorry. on depends on where we put the tank. Okay. Um, and with the roadway that you are required to construct or use, does it is that Mr. Pricer's point of access to his residence? Is that his driveway essentially? Oh, no. no. Would you have to drive that over? Was, that was a county road. He before they put in the the bypass we turned right off at of us 54 right north of this well and drove right uh, down the county road which larry pricer says that's his road now i don't know about that okay. but we have that 640 acre lease held by production so we should have right to ingress and egress and, and i'm not disagreeing with that i guess i'm just trying to pinpoint what it's going to look like um it you won't have to cross though. It's your contention. You won't have to cross his existing driveway and your trucks, your, your water. No. Trucks. Okay. No, unless he claims the county roads, his driveway, the, okay. the, the county road, Northern natural has wells in there too, a big gas storage field. And, uh, they have access to their emergence. Okay. Um, and we're not driving across his front yard unless he's, calls the county road his front yard. I don't know if we really, I don't know how county roads work. It's it's still a passable road north and south, except for the overpass. Okay. Um, do, do you happen to know, uh, when, when did you make your application uh, for, the, the application is currently pending in front of the KCC. Do you know what day that was? I'm not sure. I don't know. Josh is there. My grandson would know. Yeah, I mean, do you know? Was it after the twenty fourth of December, twenty twenty one? I couldn't tell you that for sure. Okay. Um, assuming it was some. Uh, did, you, let me back up here a little bit. You, you you applied though to temporarily abandon this well in late twenty twenty one, correct? Uh, as far as I know, that's correct. And was that application granted or denied? I, I can't answer all this. Uh, we have, I don't know. No, I don't think it was denied. I, I'm not sure. Grant, my grandson, Josh, takes care of most of this. I just tell him what we need to do. He could give you dates on that probably. Okay. I can well, get back with you or whatever. Well, and, and I know, I mean, I know the answer to it. I, the, the, ap the application was made and it was denied by the KCC for having applied for uh, 10 prior years. I guess what I'm just trying to figure out here um, is if you made your application to convert this well into a saltwater disposal well after you were denied TA status. Well, the plan all along was to use it for this when when we kind of ran out of time and economics. So before we plugged it, we'd like to, you know, start putting water down there like it was intent, it was primarily intended to be used as injection well. Okay. But it wasn't used as an injection well by you at any time in the last 32 years. Uh, no, we used it. We tried to produce it. Braden Dean was putting water in it. I don't know when they may have quit doing that. Okay. Um, I, I'm going to hit mute just real quick to ask my client a question, if that's permissible. That's fine.
Jim and Sue, you're on. You can be heard. I, I don't have any further questions here. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Nicolay. Uh, Mr. Marsh, cross-examination. No questions from staff. All right, thank you. All right, let's uh, turn to the commissioner, see if we have any commission questions. I'll turn first to Commissioner Duffy. Hi, good morning, everyone. Thank you. Um, I've got a couple of pictures here and I wish um, that um, Mr. Byers, you would describe, um, it's in the um, testimony of Larry Prizer and Tracy Chambers in their pre-filed testimony. It looks like there's a home on, on uh, in the picture, but where is the picture being taken from? Do you have access to that? Uh, no. Well, I mean, Google Earth, I guess. But I know I have no idea. It's, I, it's that picture. Okay. Well, it's blurry. I can't see. Yeah. Uh, if, if you um, have a picture of their house. I, You're right. Well, so, as far as I can tell. <laughs> okay. You don't know where it's being taken from. Okay. No. Uh, let me ask you about the road. Um, so you, I think you stated that you, um, with your proposal, you're going to um, be using the county road, correct? Well, I assume it's a county road. It, it was. Uh, that Larry Pricer, I guess, says it's his. I, I don't know about that. Okay. Um, so you have not verified whether it is a county road or his personal road? Not yet. I assume the county still uh, claimed it as there. I, I don't know how that works. Okay. But it was a county road until they put in a US 54 overpass right there. Now you can't, you know, you have to get on to go the other side of the road you have to get on and get back off to continue on north um do you think that's going to be fairly important for you to understand where the ownership of that road who it does belong to well i wasn't too concerned most of all gas leases you have the right to ingress and egress okay so so oh. ingress and egress whether it's a private road or not is that what you're telling me that's what I assume. Okay. All right. Um, do you intend to improve the road, like widen it or enhance it using asphalt or some sort of gravel, or would that road remain as in the condition that it's in? Well, we'd have to kind of work that out with Mr. Pricer. If he's going to farm up the road, there's no sense of uh, putting gravel on it. But if we need, depends on where the tank ends up, I'd like to have it by the well. If that was the case, we'd probably put some gravel on it. That ground's fairly sandy, so it's not as bad as some places getting in and out. How often would you get in and out of that road? No, oh, maybe three times, four times a week. And what type it, of vehicle would be on that road? Well, either a transport trailer or a bobtail 80-barrel truck or 130-barrel transport truck and trailer. Both. Okay. So... Um, they'd be coming in full of liquid. Oh, yes. It's just 330 feet off what was the county road or the county. I mean, not, even, not that because the county road takes up a few feet. But. Okay. Um, you mentioned in your testimony that um, Mr. Prizer um, removed your pulled off the pumping unit. Correct. Um, how do you know it was him? Well, <laughs> Uh, well, we know it was him. Employees saw it, I guess. I wasn't there, but he so, was arrested for it. He was arrested for it, so I guess so he was guilty. Your employees saw it. He was arrested for it. And what was the disposition of that action? I'm not sure. Okay. Um, let me look here in my notes. Hold on. As far as access to our well, that actually will be, the road will be going to our producing well on that same, that was the Bowers lease and had two wells. And we want to um, get the producer going again. 
and the road the, the road wouldn't be much of an issue because we got to get into the producer anyhow and it's further further to the west okay so uh you stated that this well did produce for a period of time under your ownership correct the number one that we're yes. talking about yes, yes we tried it we produced it okay so when you say you tried it and you produced it but what was the time frame that it was actually producing i have to look it up here I know we started in 2002, cleaning out the hole. I think we ran it due to the sprinkler system. We didn't run it all the time. I think we we needed a bigger pumping unit. The, it's an overhead irrigation system, so we tried not to interfere with that. So we were sort of trying to operate one hand tied behind your back. This whole lease is like this whole, these two wells are. We don't do exactly how we'd like to do it because of the irrigation system put in after the water flow was started. Okay, but um, so you started in 2002 to when? Well, uh, up until 2010, December 2010 yet, I'd say. And it was economical to do that? No, it had been water, you know, it had been down so long. We uh, didn't have a big enough pumping unit because we need a bigger pumping unit, but we don't do that because of the sprinkler system. So we never got the well pumped down. You have to pump all the water off the well before the oil comes. The well's much lighter than water, especially, uh, you know, that's just you know, like I stated, I'd, I uh, worked for Skelly and Ergetti and shot food levels as an engineering technician, and we had water floods that were kicking in big time. And when we got them pumped down, that's when the oil percent goes up. Okay. Um, you own um, a lot of other um, ventures in the Kansas landscape, a lot of other wells, and you're an operator of, of multiple. Is it nor, I mean, where you're located, do you run into the issue of having to accommodate your operation based on the um, owner, you know, the, like, like you're stating here, he had an irrigation um, um, system. So is that, isn't that a common occurrence in your neck of the woods? Yes, and some of them, the landlords themselves put in a ramp. Uh, some of another lease I bought that Phillips 66 had, uh, they had put in a earthen or dirt ramps so we can set large pumping units on it. It's as if uh, irrigation, they were, I mean, they're back to where they were when the wells were drilled in the 60s on this other lease. And the farmer put in irrigation ramps and maintains them. Okay. But the, right. this irrigation was put in after the wells were drilled. So in this particular instance, you were saying the irrigation was put in after the wells were drilled. No, oh, definitely. The wells were drilled in the 40s, 42. Right. 42, I believe is what's in that. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. 43, um, October 43. First I have on it. Okay. 150 thank barrels you. of oil a day, by, by the way. So that kind of gets your attention. All was right. it I, initial production on the records. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner French. Thank you. I, I don't believe I have any questions. All right. Thank you. Good afternoon, Mr. Byers. I believe my time to ask questions is here. Okay. Uh, now I have several. Oh. I kind of group them into three categories. One has to do with the lease history, another has to do with the well history. Um, some of the follow on to some of the questions that uh, you were just asked by uh, Commissioner Duffy, and others have to do with the injection application itself. Let's start with the uh, the uh, lease history. Help me out here a bit, if you would. Uh, <clears throat> we have a an original lease 
from Bowers to Skelly. You know what year that was? It had been from Skelly to Bowers. The well was drilled in 1943. August, last year, the initial production was October 43, 150 barrels of oil a day and three barrels of water. Uh, when I went to work for Skelly in 66, they had the lease. So I think Skelly drilled up at their Sunray was involved in this, what was a water flood, some other companies prior to the water flood. There, I believe there was another company or two on that section. Braden Dean, who's since passed away, and purchased it in 1970. And I believe that's when he began the water flood in 71 or so. And then your contention would be that it was water flooded from 71 until 90 when you bought it. When I bought it, they had already discontinued using that well. The water floods continued from a, a well in the southeast quarter that, okay. were, that was being used when we bought it and we're still using that well. And that's the only injection well being used uh, since I've had it. And I don't know when Braden Dean, the Braden Dean, you, they turned this. This was a freshwater injection well in 1970 when they started the water flood. Um, so I don't know if they ever put anything but fresh water in there, which isn't the best thing to put in the zone. Do your clays and so forth, as you know, probably swelling up and so forth. Did the well pass a KCC MIT <clears throat> prior to your acquiring the lease? Uh, yeah. Um, prior to me, oh, I'm sure, I don't know what the rules were back then. No. But we did our own MIT last year, but we didn't, that was in January, it got really cold the next day. And we had another, our best leases were down from another MIT that we had, to, well, we had to get on. No, we I didn't call the state out. There wasn't any until we got our, uh, you know, we just had a regular steel tubing in there and to convert it back to injection well, we wanted to get seal type, duraline or whatever, saltwater compatible tubing. So we you know, MIT did it ourselves. And like I say, it was just the first week of January and cold weather. And so we pulled everything out of the hole and we could MIT it this afternoon if that's necessary, if we get the state out there. Then right now we have everything out of the hole. We just got the bond log run. We had to pull everything out of the hole to run the bond log. So we didn't want to get the cart ahead of the horse, you know, so to speak. I'm, I'm going back to before you owned it. And I'll ask again, was the well subjected to a KCC MIT test before you owned it? There was a producer back then, I believe, when Braden, I think when Braden Dean bought it, it's still probably... Uh, no, I, mean, no, I, understand, I understand all that, sir. Uh, Braden Dean, you're telling us, uh, started injecting in 1970 or 71 thereabouts. You bought it in 90. So I guess what I'm asking is, in that intervening period, was this well ever subjected to a KCC MIT test with that tubing in at that time? No, oh, whenever they started doing the MITs, I would guess. I don't have a record of it right here in front of me. 1982. It's 1982. 82, they did MIT. They started MITs in 82. 82. I, you know, I got it in 1990. I can't tell you about prior to that. In my notebook, I don't have a record of that, but we, uh, okay. we tried to produce it. Okay. You know, we produced it for off and on there for a few years. Okay. All right. <clears throat> My main reason for asking that is I think one of the one of the uh, points that Mr. Eisenhower uh, brought forth was that after all, it had been uh, permitted once before. But I'm, I'm, I'm trying to point I'm trying to make is I think the permitting process back then, the permitting process right now is an apples to oranges. It's quite different today. Right. And, uh, and uh, back then, there were no MITs prior to 1982. Uh, it could be 1983 or four because it took time for the regulations to actually implement the, the law that was passed in 82. Okay, let's move on. Let's talk about the lease some more, if we could. Um, so we have a lease uh, that was, uh, I have a, there's a copy of the lease that's appended as exhibit C to the uh, original protest application. And the uh, lease from um, Bowers to Skelly 
is dated uh, June of 1939. So, and it was for a five-year primary term beginning in August. So just prior to the expiration of that primary term, we had the drilling on ticket of the number one Bowers, which occurred, I think, as you indicated, in October of 43. Okay. okay. Uh, so how about, uh, let's, let's do this. Let's, uh, let's make this a little easier maybe on both of us here. Uh, John, if you could bring this up, if we could go to do a split screen on it, if you could go to Mr. Byer's pre-filed testimony. And I'm looking here now at um, Exhibit C to his pre-filed testimony. One moment, it's pulling up for me. Okay. What he's pulling up, uh, Mr. Byers, is the information that was drawn from the State Geological Survey website in July of this year with respect to this lease. Chair Keen, are you, are you seeing it? That is it, John, yes. Uh, do you see this, Mr. Byron? Yes. Uh, it, it shows eight wells here. If you could go down, let's start going down through the list of these wells. Tell us which of these, no, no, not that, John. I don't want production. I want these wells. You have it. That's what we want to look at, just the well data. Um, we can go down through and tell me which of these wells are currently, currently active and which ones are plugged. How about the number one, Selton? Yes, it's still producing. And from what zone? Uh, Kansas City. Okay. And the... Um, uh, we can go right now in uh, the, the left-hand column, the Royce number three. Uh, yes. There, it's in, also in the Kansas City. Is it producing now? Uh, yes, my uh, two, three. Uh, it's, it's shut down right now. We'd like to get it going again, but let's see. How long has it been shut in? Uh, we squeezed occasionally in 07. Uh, had it, I think we tried it, had it run about eight, nine years ago. It's been down let's see, for some time for sure. So about, nine, about nine years, you're guessing? Yeah. Okay. Um, how about the Royce number five? Yes. Active. It makes yes, it makes the most water, but it's we keep it running. And which zone is that from? Can, uh, Kansas, Lansing, Kansas City. Okay. There are, and the number two, Royce. I'm sorry, selling one. I was thinking, yeah, selling one is right. Yeah, it's. I told you wrong on selling one. I was getting the Royce one and selling one mixed up. Okay, and what's this? What's the story on the selling one? No, it's running. Okay, the Sullivan's one's running. I'm going down through the left column. The Royce number three is uh, has been shut in for approximately nine years. The Royce number five is active from the Lansing, Kansas City. Yeah. Okay, and the Royce number two? Uh, it's shut in right now. And for how long? Uh, uh, it's been about eight, nine years also. We'll probably start it up again with the good prices as if when we can get rigs and so forth. Uh, is that Lansing, Kansas City also? Yes. And the uh, the Royce oil well, old well workover number one. Okay. Um, that's okay. The number one well, the Northern Natural came in there. I can't tell you what war, year in there mid 70s early 70s and, and uh, started their natural gas storage field and they had to wash down all existing old wells existing wells and make sure that uh, they were plugged off properly because they're injecting in a deeper zone the viola zone and maybe another zone now so royce one they promised uh, doy deem that if they hurt if they damaged one of their wells they'd drill them a new well so he claimed that they uh, that the Royce number one didn't 
after they replugged it, that it never did come back. So they drilled the Royce number five. Okay, so, so is this Royce all well work over number one? Is that a plugged well? No, it's producing. Okay. And that's from what zone? Kansas City. They're all, yeah, all these are Lansing, Kansas City. Okay. Uh, Selen's number two? Yeah, it's temporary TA right now. Bowers two? Well, that's the one the low profile pump unit and it makes oil. Uh, if it wasn't for the sprinkler system, it'd been running 24 seven, 365 days a year, you know, without mechanical problems. It, it had top. a good, good show of oil. Okay. So it makes, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, so is number four. Yeah. It's TA right now. The Bowers number one, that's the subject. Well, and uh, the Bowers Royce number four. Bowers Royce number four. That's the last one on the right hand oh, side. Oh, that's our injection well. Yeah. It's okay. Probably, yeah, we've been using that ever since we bought the lease. And I guess, I don't know, Doy Deem started, Braden Deems started using that from day one when they started the water flood, I assume. Has, uh, has this uh, Bowers Royce number four, have you evidenced any enhanced recovery as a result of its injection? Well, I imagine uh, after all these years, our, our cons uh, production on this lease fluctuates with the price of oil and downtime and so forth, that uh, it's been pretty darn consistent. Okay. It, it varies more or less due to price of oil and, you know, getting rigs and so forth like that. They're not big wells, but they've been pretty darn, pretty consistent after all these years. Okay. Um, and the beauty part of it, they run off mostly their own gas, which helps a lot. Okay. When was the last well drilled on this lease? On the whole unit? Well, on, yes, on the Cunningham unit. I can't tell you that right now. Um, Northern Natural, you know, there's injection wells in there. So that would, they're deeper than we are. I don't know if you want to count them or not. No, no. We, have, we, have, we haven't ever drilled a well. I don't suppose Doy Deem ever did. Okay. So in this property, that's um, <clears throat> where the, 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 the landowners, where the protesters here, where they own, uh, they're, they're part of this unit. Um, since you've had the property, if I understand it, in 1990, you have not drilled on this lease. No, there may be some dry hole. I think there might be a dry hole or two to the west and north. I'd have to look at a map. Okay. What's your average daily production today? No, we, you know, five, six barrels a day. We keep going. Okay. Um, let's turn to the Bowers number one well. And John, you can take that screen chart down, please. Um, what we might have you bring out this another, let's bring up something else. John, if you could go to um, the pre-filed testimony of Pricer and Chambers, Exhibit A. One moment. More specifically, John, what I need is the KCC transmittal letter that's dated November 24th, 2021. I'm on the testimony. I'm looking for the exhibit. I, I think, John, John, you passed it. You passed it. Oh, oh, it's exhibit A. Is that what you said? Uh, yes, exhibit A. Oh, my apologies. Hold on. Yeah. There we go. Okay. Exhibit A. Slow, and, slow, uh, down, slow, slow down the process just a bit here. Sure. Uh, let's go down to. Um, yeah. See if you can find you. You you've passed it. There's a letter dated from the KCC uh, staff, District One. 
but it is November 24th, 21. The, the, November 24th, 2021? Yes. Okay. Yes. Give me a moment. I, I can find that. This is Josh. I believe it's the very last page of Exhibit A. I believe this is it. This is it. Go down one more page for me, John. Go, go, uh, yeah, go, go, go back, go back, go, go back, back and back one page before the one I asked you for. Yes. Right there. Lock that in. Let's see. Go on down just a little bit more so we can see. That's good. Uh, Mr. Byers, can you see this? This is a temporary yeah. well abandonment application. Can you see that? Yes, pretty good. It's a, it's a little small, but I would need to ask you some questions about the well that, uh, that this, yes, that's better, John. Thank you. Um, let's go up to the boxed area there if we can, uh, Mr. Byers where it shows the different size casing and the, uh, and the amount of cement that was used uh, for the well. Do you see that? Um, it's, it's the yeah, box. Yes. 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 It yeah. shows for the surface casing, it was uh, eight and five to eight surface casing set to a setting depth of 384 with 200 sacks of cement. With the reduction casing, it shows it's five and a half casing set to 3,500 feet with 300 sacks of cement. How do you know that that was the amount of cement that was used to cement each one of these strings? How do we know that? By your state, by the Corporation Commission records. Uh, I wasn't alive back then when they drilled it, so. Well, it, what records? Well, how what do I know? What, okay, restate the question, please. Yes. Uh, how do you know that these different strings, the surface and the production casing, were actually set, were actually, we actually used 200 sacks of cement on the surface and 300 sacks of cement on the production? How uh, do you know? I don't know that. I wasn't, like I said, I wasn't alive back then, sir. I wouldn't know. I wasn't there. No, I know. I, I, you can rely upon records, but who, where are the records? Okay. Where's, the, where's the proof of the fact that, that this is the cementing? Well, the Kansas Corporation records. But we have a whole lot of records here. I'm wondering. I, I, I could turn to it. I, I will. I, I will. When we get to her turn, when we cross-examine uh, Ms. Schaefer, uh, I will turn to the testimony here, just in the interest of time. But her indication here is that there are no records that exist with respect to uh, CMA. That's her testimony. I can turn to that if you want to see it. But that is her testimony. Um, so I'm curious as about where these numbers came from. Uh, just the state records. I don't know if, if uh, Braden Dean, I don't know. Okay. How was it that you came to believe that this was the amount of cement that was used? Well, I have to ask Josh or uh, Kevin was here at the time. Uh, we may have them in our files. We have a lot of files. I think it was on a scout card. Okay. Let's go on down just below the, um, let's just, it, you don't have to move it, John. We're fine. Just below that box, if you would, Mr. Byers. You see where it, it says casing fluid level from, sur from surface to uh, 1109, how determined echo meter, you see that? And it shows yes. the difference. Let's look at this, focus on the line just below that. Mm -hmm. It says casing squeezes, mm -hmm. and it shows uh, from um, 2016 feet to 2174 feet, there was a squeeze job here that consisted of 150 sacks of cement that was undertaken on December 1st, 2010. Do you see that? Yes. Explain to the commission, give us some idea, what's a... What is a squeeze job? Why does the well have to be squeezed? Uh, it had a casing leak we determined uh, by our pressure testing with Packers. And uh, we uh, 
and we've got a monologue run showing where the cement is Friday. So, so okay. we, you know, we had water coming in that we didn't want from up above the original the cement job at, you know, when they ran, drilled the well, which is not unusual, as you probably know, have casing leaks, especially in this older well. Uh, so we were able to pump cement through the leak and let it set up and drilled it out, and, and we had it fixed. It's quite an interval, is it not, that uh, is squeezed cement. It's about 150-plus feet, isn't it? Uh, yes, sir. I mean, where our cement is. Yeah, we have a bond log now, so. Kind of no, we'll, we'll get to that, but that's, a, that, that's yeah. a large interval. And 150 sacks is a pretty good, pretty good sized dose of cement for a, uh, a casing leak squeeze, isn't it? No, not for us. No. Okay. You bring, you bring plenty and you sure don't want to quit when you think you about have it because you run out of cement. We, okay. we do a little overkill instead of, you know, instead of not quite getting it. That's okay. Good. I believe how, how did you squeeze the well? Did you squeeze it down the casing or did you, I presume you squeezed it down the casing? No, we had ran a packer in the hole. We have a bridge plug, uh, ran a packer in the hole. Actually, we didn't need a bridge plug. But, well, we did have a bridge plug on this uh, retrievable bridge plug. And then you come up, you isolate your casing leak, and then you set however far above it and start pumping cement in it. Okay. And then you displace the cement, blow your uh, packer on your tubing just to not get in trouble. Don't want to cement your tubing in. So, and then you right. had to set up and, and drill it out and see if you got it. We did. Okay. Well, that's a pretty good description of a squeeze job. But basically, the main reason it was required is because of the casing integrity was deteriorated to the point it had to be done. Isn't that correct? Yes. Um, <clears throat> so, after the time of the squeeze job itself, did you conduct uh, any tests? Uh, to determine how successful the squeeze job had been? No, oh, yeah, you drill it out, and before you pull your bridge, bridge plug out, you pressure test it. Pressure test your casing, and if it holds fine, you're, you're good, you know. You how know, many feet? It. Go ahead. Uh, then you pull your bridge plug out, and I believe that's when we were trying to produce the well. We I think we produced it for a while, and, and then decided we weren't pumping it down, and so we found our case and we maybe we did that before we got i have to look i wasn't prepared for all these questions about this part of the well but i mean if i can take time and read my notes <laughs> but they're kind of lengthy but our bond log we just ran through that we're in pretty good shape on cement behind the pipe let's talk about the bond log. tell us tell us more specifically what did the bond log reveal no I'm, so, I'm sorry. Uh, 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 I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Mr. Byers, if you would, for the benefit of the commission, what is a bond log? What's the purpose of a bond log? Uh, to tell you where you have cement behind your pipe and where you don't. Uh, a simple explanation. Most people kind of know maybe, but so like uh, if you have a piece of pipe and you beat on it with a hammer, it kind of rings. If you beat on the pipe and you have cement behind it, it's kind of a thud. That's a simple explanation. Uh, it's an electronic tool. I can't describe the electronics of it but you, you don't you don't need to what were the results oh um, we had good cement let me get my notes on that find the right page we had good cement down below and we had okay here's and i this is from an expert that ran the log uh jim and i our line uh, hayes candidate ran it if you want to take notes uh from 3435 to 2800 feet we had to sand the well back. You know, you had uh, you have to have the hole full of water. Actually, our static fluid level, I didn't know. Static fluid level was high enough. We could have got the whole thing bond log without uh, plugging the thing off. But I wanted to make dang sure we got all we could. Uh, without fluid in the hole, you can't get a bond, run a bond log. It needs fluid in the hole. So from 3,435 feet to 2,800 feet, good bond. And then... Uh, from uh, 2,800 to 220 is free pipe. Uh, so there's no cement there a little bit, but uh, 2420, somewhat of a bond. Now we're coming up the hole. Now from 20, 2,200 feet to 1,850 feet, good bond. And that's where we squeezed our casing after I got it. And then 
from 1,850 feet on up to the surf to 1,330 feet, there's some cement, but not real good. And from 1,330 feet to the surface, uh, of course, there's no cement. Okay. Uh, so go back to yeah, we have almost over a thousand feet of good cement in total in the, in the hole. But. Okay, uh, go back, go back to on that one just a, a second for me, if you would, Mr. Byers. From thirty-eight hundred to twenty-eight hundred, it was good bond. From thirty-eight, right? from what did you say? Thirty-eight hundred. Thirty-five hundred to twenty-eight hundred was a good bond. Yeah, yeah. thirty-four, thirty-five. The case is at thirty-five hundred. We sanded back and didn't quite. That's open hole below thirty-five hundred. Back in those days, they did a lot of open hole. So we had guesstimated how much hole was below the casing and we didn't quite get it. So we had to sand it back some more and we wanted to make sure we got it. Right. We're pretty close. You know, it's 34, 35. It's close to 3,500 as you can. And we don't know. We didn't add in KV. So there's a few more feet there we could add. Okay. So to 2,800, that was good. And then yeah. what was the interval 28? What was the next? From 2,800 2800 to 2,220, uh, no cement. Free. Okay, and, and then the next interval was what? Uh, from 2200, 1850, good bond. It's good cement. And that's where we had the casing leak we squeezed way back, 2010 or whatever. Okay. Okay. Um, all right, well, thank you. That's helpful. Okay. Um, Looking at my questions here. I think the way you conducted the bond log is, is good, that it does. You have to have the hole full of water, otherwise any uh, fugitive gas will screw up the bonding tool. I think that's yeah. exactly correct. And uh, so that was, that was performed correctly. Here's my concern. We have a well that has 79 year old casing in it. It has evidence of a prior problem and that's what you tried to correct obviously by doing the squeeze job in 2010. We have now by your bond log, a demonstration that from um, 1330 to surface, uh, there is no cement. Um, th this was, was it not, a, an alternate one completion on cementing? You know what I mean by that? Well, back in 1942, I'm not sure what they had. Well, that's, yeah, today, yeah, yeah, alternate, alternate, alternate one means alternate yeah. one means alternate yeah. two is where you're cementing the casing in from the yeah. bottom to the surface. Right. Two alternate steps. one is all other cementing. That is where the cementing does not reach the surface. So basically, we have 79-year-old casing from 1330 up to the surface, which has been subject to all the downhole vicissitudes that there are down there for a long time. And so uh, I guess my question to you is, under those circumstances, why would it not be the safest course to do to try to run a casing integrity test <clears throat> before you run the tubing and packer in and do an MIT. Why would that not be a safe precaution for the protection of the fresh water given the age of the casing? Um, yeah, you mean just the run? I'm not sure about the casing integrity other than the, than the pressure test and the bond log. It would, it's another form of pressure test. That's right. Yeah. The pressure. Well, I'm, asking, I'm asking it somewhat rhetorically because it seems to me that on an abundance, abundance of caution approach, given the well history, especially with uh, the fact that you've, you've had to do a squeeze cement job once before, and who knows, God, <laughs> we hope not, could happen tomorrow at a different interval, and you've done squeeze cementing on other wells in this area, in this, on this lease, that's my concern. My, just con my concern is the casing integrity. Yeah. And, how, and how do we verify that? One method, method of doing it clearly is the MIT. That has all the injection equipment in the hole, and we have casing to boot. But another way is to do a casing integrity test. Um, so I was just throwing that out, given your experience. 
uh, well, for your edification. I'll, let me, this kind of off the subject a little bit, not on plugging some wells. I, we've plugged some gas wells in Barber County. I'm not saying this county would be the same, but uh, wells drilled in the 50s, mid 50s, uh, pulling casing out the Round Meadows Lodge. They look like brand new pipe. It's, you couldn't tell it from brand new pipe. I'm not saying this pipe will look like that, but we weren't, you know, we were around 28, 29. Um, it, the collars were green. All the stencils were on the pipe. I couldn't believe it. I've had that happen more than once. Yeah. Uh, but that's down in Barber County. This is a different animal. But I've just, I just saw that out there. Sometimes this old pipe is better than the new pipe. Right. That's true. There are anomalies all over the old patch, aren't there? Uh, yeah. To be sure. Uh, John, let's go back to screen share. Let's go back to the document dated November 21st, 2020, 24th, I'm sorry, 2021. Yes, that's it, please. <clears throat> Mr. Burns, have you had a chance to review this letter? Uh, yes. Okay. In essence, I believe what this letter is, is that your TA tenure limitation had expired. And so as of November 24, 2021, the state is telling you that you have basically three options. And those are all set out there below that part that's in bold face type that says shut in over 10 years. One is that you can plug the well. The other is that you can return it to service by December 24th of 2021. And the third is that you can request an exception to the 10 year limitation provided you request that exception before December 24th, 2021. And in all candor, Mr. Byers, my question is, why did you do none of these things? Uh, I don't know. I don't know if we did or didn't. Uh, I think we've been in correspondence with the Dodge City office over this. I know we have. Josh Reineker that uh, usually talks to him about it. Well, did you apply for an exception before uh, December 24th, 2021? Well, I can't answer that for sure. If you don't have it, I, I don't know. Josh takes care of that stuff. I assumed we had him. Uh, I know he was there in January, you know, a week later. I don't know if they were, no, they, I'm sure they weren't open Christmas. I'm not sure what day the, the week Christmas, Christmas was on, but we were oh, there in January. You know, working on the thing. I presume the well was not returned to service by December 24, 2021. Yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, December 22, let's see, no, that's 22, 21. No, I don't have my notes with me on that. Okay. I know we've been in contact with the Dodge City office about this. Let's go back to, um, I'm drawing on the testimony I think you gave in response to Commissioner Duffy's questions that you have this well equipped to pump from 2002 until 2010 and that uh, because of the water production was so excessive, you could not pump the well down. Am I, am, is my recollection correct in your testimony? Yeah, it needed a bigger pumping unit, but uh, when the irrigation system's running, uh, we can't do that. So uh, you're and, stating that from- Working with Mr. Pricer has probably been the biggest obstacle why it wasn't running or so you're converted to this years ago. Okay, so you're stating that from 2002 until 2010, this lace was fully equipped with production equipment and you were producing, trying to produce the well. Is that what you're saying? Uh, not, to, not all, repeat that. From what years? Two to 10? 2002 to 2010. Yeah, well, we squeezed the case and leak in 2010. So it was obviously working on the well and we produced it since after that. 
What about before that? Uh, um, I don't know. We had to go in 2010, 2003. Let's see. I can't answer that right now, but we can do the more research from. You know, we swabbed on it in 2002. Yeah, we were on it in December 2002, slobbing on the well and cleaning the hole out. In 2003, we set the two the Ken, the pump unit on it, and we might have had one there before, but I don't have it on record here. Two thousand ten is when we fixed the casing leak up above. All right, I can move on. <laughs> okay, uh, John, you can take that down, thank you. Uh, Mr. Byers, when we went through the list of the eight wells that appear on the geological surveys uh, list there and you were telling me the status of all these wells, I think you indicated two wells had been shut in for a long time. The Royce number three and the Royce number two for eight or nine years. Have you sought a TA status on either of those wells during that period? I, I assume we have, I can't, I'll have to ask Josh. We'll probably- I think you, ind I think you indicated that uh, cells number one, that that was TA status. Cells number four was TA status. So I was wondering about Royce two and Royce three. Let's see. Now I believe they're T A two and three. Yes. They are T A. Yes. Chair Keen, I don't mean, well, I do mean to interrupt, but I don't see uh, operators council on the screen here. He may have dropped. Well, that's a point. I, I just did notice that too. Um, let's, um, John, we can take a brief break here if you want to. Uh, why don't we do that? If you can contact um, uh, <clears throat> Mr. Yes. Eisenhower, and see if we can bring him back on. Why don't we do that? Yes, uh, that's it's, a good idea. It's, it's now, it's now, hold on a minute. Let's see what time we have here. It's now, uh, I have 1.34. Uh, we'll stand in recess until 1.45. All right. Okay. I'll try contacting him. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mr. Uh, Mr. Byers, remember you are still uh, not muted. No. Uh, just yeah. realize that. I'm working no. on a new computer here trying to figure out how to mute it. Okay. Well, that's all right. Here, actually, I can mute you. So I will go ahead and do that. Okay. Uh, 
And uh, then when it's time to unmute you, I'll press the button to request the unmuting. Okay. Hold on. That's right.
Uh, Tyson, I, uh, I see you now. You're on mute, but uh, we can see you. Tyson, would you like me to? There we go. Are we good? You are good. Can you see us? Yep, I can see everything. I'll get this back to dad. We're having trouble with our internet connection. So, yeah, I don't. Yeah. I have to go to a meeting. So if this drops. <laughs> yeah. How long ago? When did you get a ticket going 103? Yeah, yeah they're ready. John, we're we're back and perfect. Yeah. Hey, Robert, before um, the commission took, I think it was a 10 minute break. So I think we've got okay. a minute or two. Um, okay. But um, if if when I called you and you said you dropped eight or nine minutes ago, I think it took us a few minutes to notice. OK. Um, uh, were we still just going over that letter and and when Jim tried to produce the well? Yes, I think we were still going over when he tried to produce the well. Um, let's see here. Jim, are you are you on Jim? Are you connected right now? There you are. Here I'm gonna ask you to unmute you, Jim. There you go. Jim, um Mr. Eisenhower asked a moment ago, was, was were the questions still about when you, you tried to produce? We want to make sure Mr. Eisenhower's reasonably filled in on, on anything he may have missed. Do you, do you remember the last couple of lines, last little bit of questioning the last few minutes? Uh, on this particular whale? Y yeah. That was one. That was one. Yeah. Was, I don't, I, you know, I, I was. We're just trying to find out, Jim, what I would have missed. Yeah. Just for the last couple of minutes, Jim. Um, you know, I, none of, I try to write down the main things I need to know, and I may have missed some stuff we may have produced after this. I know we. Well, Jim, what we're trying to figure out is when I dropped off, what was the last thing you were talking about? What does well, you, you heard about the bond log and the. Yes. And where, where we're good and where we're bad. Okay. Yes. Not, okay. And then uh, you were being questioned about uh, there was a long uh, bit of silence. You did something in 2002, you did something in 2003, and then you did the squeeze job in 2010, and then I lost it. Okay. And up in 2000, uh, I'm looking back to my old notes. Uh, eight, hey, uh, Mr. Eisenhower, you, you didn't miss much uh, okay. after that. Let's, yeah. let's uh, just, 2009. Whatever. The last uh, 2009 would still produce the sum and then. Uh, okay. I, I, I'm okay, John. Okay, good. I just want to make sure you're, okay. you're comfortable there. All right. um, Thank you. Yeah. All right. I don't remember. Um, it was a 10 minute break, but I don't, I don't recall what the time of return was. So um, okay. now we're just standing by. Okay. 145. I General, thought that was it, but there we go. All right, I, I'll mute myself. <laughs> okay, John, 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 we're at the time, and here, and we're back. Let's see if everyone's here. It appears that uh, we are. So uh, we're back on the record now, having taken that uh, brief recess. Mr. Byers, I would uh, remind you that you're still under oath. Um, let me resume my questions with the last line of questions that I have for you, which have to do with the injection application itself. Um, John, can you split screen the injection application? Not the amendment, but the original application? Yes, one moment.
believe you have it. Uh, can you see this, Mr. Barnes? Um, yes. Let's see. That is actually yeah, the I application to amend. John, go to the next page. See if we can get to the application itself. Uh, down. Right. This is the application itself. Uh, the application is dated December 22nd, 2021. Can you see this, Mr. Byers? That uh, nail's kind of blurred. Let me get closer or something else. Okay. There we go. Is that better? Yes. Okay. Let's go on down the page a little, Jim. I mean, uh, uh, John. And uh, you can see here that it shows the three, the three, um, leases from which uh, the uh, water proposed to be injected into the number one bowers if this application is approved is going to be derived. You see that? Yes. It's a mix of, it appears, Mississippian and uh, Lansing, Kansas City waters. Okay, let's, uh, let's go on, on to the next page, John. And here again, uh, right there, go back up to the well. Uh, completion data right there, yes. As you can see, it shows, as other documents have shown, um, the amount of cement that was used for both the surface and the production casing, although we don't have anything more than anecdotal evidence, at least on the record, to show anything that verifies it. Um, now, go on down, John. Um, yeah, to the well diagram. Now, my understanding is, uh, Mr. Barson, am I correct, that that this is the intended well design if the application is granted where you would actually shut, set the injection packer at roughly uh, 3460 um, or a little bit less than 100 feet from the open hole TD, is that right? Correct. Okay, go on down further, John, if you would. Okay, I looked at this map, this map, <laughs> Unfortunately, there are a number of maps that have been provided by the operator. This incidental the application, unfortunately, does not identify by well ID number or lease names or names what, what we're looking at here. It can be derived, I think. Uh, it, it, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing that, that the furthest northeast well with the triangle indicates that's the location of the number one bower as well. Uh, be is that... Okay, I'm not sure what that north-south line is on the Alaska <laughs> the highway. But, but it is confusing. That's supposed to, is that supposed to be a section of land or is the county road going north and south that's not on the section line? I, I couldn't tell you, sir. Uh, okay. There's nothing in here that indicates what section's what or anything else where there's yeah, different sections. It's, it's, it's a very confusing map. Let's go on down. Let's go on. Let's not belabor that. Go on down, John, a bit more, if you would. Um, that kind of embellishes a little going down further, down, down. Okay, on down. Now you can see, that's right, right there. Uh, 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 not, not, not quite to the end, not quite to the end. Um, right about there. So down a little further, down a little further. So it's subscribed and sworn to on the first day of uh, January, 2022, um, notwithstanding the fact that it's dated the 21st of, uh, of uh, December, 2021. Okay, um, John, you can take the screen chair down. So Mr. Byers, as I understand it, we have basically the sources of water for this injection well will be from the produced water on this lease plus three plus plus water from three uh, other leases correct uh, correct and uh, i'm taking it from the well from the injection application that you are the operator of those three leases as well as this lease is that correct correct okay uh do you have any kind of payment arrangements from each one of these leases so that there is some kind of compensation paid by the three leases from the three other leases from which the water is going to be injected to uh, remove and dispose of that water. Is there any compensation agreement there? No, uh, 
Ken, uh, Jeff Kennedy at a Cuyahoga meeting, you may or may not have been there, told us in a, in a meeting that uh, on a water flood, you do not have to compensate for outside water being brought in. Okay. Uh, or you don't, uh, you know, that you're allowed to do that. Make up water. I, you know, I don't know that for a fact. That's just what Jeff Kennedy said. Okay. And you probably know him. I know of him. <laughs> um, Mr. Burrs, that concludes uh, my questions of you. Um, okay. Let's uh, appreciate your uh, appreciate your patience with my questions as well. Let's go back and see if we have uh, any redirect, uh, Mr. Eisenhower. Just very briefly. Uh, Jim, the county road that uh, Commissioner Duffy was talking about, uh, is that road used on a daily basis by Northern Natural Gas? Well, by a lot, several people. Okay. So well, the, from Larry, but they cut it off from Larry's house north. Uh, I think Northern probably does use it. I know they have a, well, they have an inject well right near there to the south. Okay. Uh, are you aware that uh, your grandson received an email from Michael Meyer uh, prior to December 24th giving Apollo Energies until March of 2022 to file this application? Uh, I found that out a while ago. Okay. To, to March of 22. Yes. Uh, yeah. Well, no, I'm not that, not that one. I thought we had a permission to. Well, I'm not sure about that. Josh, if he's there, he knows. Okay, well, I'll ask him. Uh, okay. Do you have any objection to Commissioner King's um, suggestion that you should do a, a casing integrity test? Well, uh, no. Uh, uh, don't know what the cost will be, but no, I don't have an objection to that if that helps things. Okay. Well, if that's a requirement of this application being approved, are you willing to do that? Yes. And the when you attempted to produce the Bowers number one well from, you said it's different one. The first time you testified, you said you did it between 2010 and 2013. Then you told Commissioner Duffy 2002 and there was a large gap until 2010, uh, whatever. When you did do it, were you successful in uh, producing oil and or gas and paying quantities? And if not, why? No, we could not get, we could not get it pumped down. We needed bigger equipment and working on the well due to the sprinkler system. Uh, I hate to keep restating this, but Larry Pricer was, Dealing with him, he's threatened our employees. He's okay. said, well, you know, I that makes it harder are. to go We understand with. there's a history, uh, okay. and I think everybody understands that at this point. But you were, is it true that you were never able to pump the water down enough to get to, to the oil? That's and correct. That, and we need that, it. that at least is in part due to the fact that you had to use low-profile pump jack instead of a larger pump jack because of the circle irrigation system. Right, that's correct. Okay, you could have used a, a large pump jack in the event either you put ramps or Mr. Pricer put ramps so that it would not affect the irrigation system, correct? Correct. Okay, but that didn't happen. No. Okay, that's all I have, Commissioner. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Eisenhower. Um, uh, recross, Mr. Nicolai. Uh, just, just one question here, Chair Keen. Thank you. I just want to, and it may have been answered already. I just want to make sure I understand this. We're talking about the buyers, or excuse me, the Bowers number one. Was there ever a low profile unit installed on that well? No, we had a Kincaid 80, which I think fit underneath there. It wasn't exactly a low, the Bowers number two has a low profile. So there was never a low profile unit installed on the, on the well at issue here with this application. Um, I'd have to go back and look. Uh, no, not a, I think we produced that during non-irrigation time. 
we had a Kincaid 80 on there, and I don't know that that, I think it would have been not quite clear. So I think we had to do this off and on. Like I say, the low profile pump units are dangerous and they tear up about five times more than a conventional or more. They're not a good thing to have. Okay. I don't have anything further. Thank you. All right. Uh, thank you, Mr. Nigley. Uh, recross, Mr. Marsh. Uh, I don't think I have any recross. Thank you, Chucky. Okay. All right. Let's follow up and see if there are any questions remaining from the commission. Uh, Commissioner Duffy. Yes, thank you. Can you just briefly explain what a ramp is? Me? Yes. Uh, but the irrigation system is basically a big piece of pipe, you know, it has goes around and around the whole quarter. And uh, so it's maybe eight feet off the ground, 10 feet, the pump unit stick up higher than that. So in order to clear the pump unit, if you don't have a low profile, you need a real short thing, six, seven foot tall. Therefore your length of stroke is limited because you don't have, you know, but a ramp is either dirt or a metal ramp that the, the wheels of the low, of the low profile system climb up over just like a little hill there. But you never installed that, nor did uh, Mr. Prizer, correct? Not on this well. Okay. But you have installed them on other wells before? Well, on his, on the other well on this lease, uh, you know, the wells were there before irrigation. Right. But we tried to work with Mr. Pricer, which is very difficult. Um, so he, uh, I believe he put in a little short ramp, which it wasn't made big enough, and it eventually hit our pumping unit and tore up part of the irrigation system, even though we told him it needed built up a little more. I told him, told him I would put in the low profile unit if he would put a little bit of ramp there just so we'd even clear it. And it did for a while and, and he didn't keep it up. And I think I offered to do it and he didn't want me to. And then it ended up hitting our pumping unit. And uh, his inch, uh, well, our insurance, I guess, helped pay for it several thousand dollars. Okay, thank you. Um, thank mm -hmm. you, Chair Keene. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner French. No questions. Thank you. Okay, very good. I have just one brief question for you, Mr. Byers. Uh, is it possible or even probable that the reason why you were unable, despite uh, your, 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 the testimony of your efforts to do so, to pump off the number one buyers was because of the uh, casing leak, which uh, was, was not remedied until after you shut down? Um. Let me look when we fix that. We, uh, no, I, I think it's going to take a long time to pump the thing down, especially if, a, if we can't run it 365 days a year or thereabout. We need a bigger pump unit to move more water than what the little pump units can handle. Okay. All right. That ends my questions. I believe we're at an end of your testimony, Mr. Byers. Okay. We very much appreciate your testimony here this afternoon, and you may virtually step down. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. All right, we're now ready for the uh, protesters' witnesses. Uh, Mr. Nicolay, if you would, please call your first witness. Uh, I will, and I'm going to shift my computer here so I think we can see everybody. I'm going to have Larry Pricer go first, so I'll have you. All right. Okay, and can everyone hear me there? We can. Okay. Um, I will ask that Mr. Pricer be sworn in. Mr. Pricer, would you please raise your right hand? Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God, or under penalty of perjury? I do. Thank you. Okay. Um, Mr. Pricer, uh, we're here today on an application uh, for converting the Bowers number one well, it's currently operated by Apollo Energy into a uh, saltwater injection. Well, are you, have you been provided with a copy of that application? Yeah. Okay. And that's seeking to convert the Bowers number one well located on the north half of the northeast quarter of 32811. Are, are you familiar with that property? Yes. And how are you familiar with it? I live there. You live there? Okay. And it's an 80 acres I bought in 1979. Okay. Um, when you purchased that property, was it an irrigated property? No. No. When did you, um, when did you seek a water appropriation permit from the Kansas Division of Water Resources? Uh, in 1980. 
okay you know, uh, like March okay and so that was an irrigated circle in March of shortly I put it in okay. until 81 okay okay um at the time though that you installed the irrigation system um the the Bowers number one well at issue it had been drilled correct yes and what <clears throat> to the best of your recollection what was that well being used for was it a producer were they in, was it an injection well it was uh nothing above ground it's an injection well okay and it uh it had a freshwater well there still there and they were using it for i think about by the time i was irrigating they about shut it down and there was okay that's number one okay the number one well um there's also a second well in your irrigated circle, correct? Yes. And, and which well is that? Number two. That's ours, number two. And there was no pumping unit on it when I bought it. Okay. It wasn't even being used. Okay. So it was just a... Sitting on Okay. Um, this is a full half section irrigated circle. How many acres no, are no, you? No, it's, it's uh, 65 acres irrigated. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. On an 80. That, that, that's what I meant, a full yeah. half of a quarter. That's what I meant. Yeah. Um, and, and and this property, your your residence is located out there as yes. well. It's okay. in the corner. Okay. Um, do you have a rough idea about how close your residence is to the Bowers number one well? My well. With, um, your residence. Oh, not, the residence? Yeah. It's uh, about uh, 550 feet. Okay. We measured it. Yeah. Okay. And and when did you measure that? About two months ago. Okay. When this all started. Okay. Um, do you have a, uh, d does your house have a domestic water supply yes. well? Yes. Okay. And where's that? It's located? just about the same distance. Okay. Um, and as far as your, your, uh, your pivot irrigation systems concerned, where's that water okay. well located? From that, from where this number one is. It's in the middle of the end span, so it is uh, right at uh, 1,100 feet from my well. Okay. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna hand you and, and John, if you could pull it up. This is gonna be. Uh, let's see, our exhibit B. Yes, one moment. There, there's a big well, we'll, okay. we'll look at this one first. Okay. Okay. Now, this is in your direct testimony, is that right? This is in our direct testimony, yes. Is this what you're looking for? Uh, yes, that is what I'm looking for. Perfect. And Mr. Pricer, did you did you take this photograph? She did. Oh, and and she yeah. is Tracy. Tracy. Okay. We've got to remember that we we have a record here, okay. and so we're we're wanting to make sure um, that we we have things identified. But you're familiar with this location, correct? Yeah. Okay. And so where this photo is taken, is this taken from a county road right here? No, it's on the overpass. Okay. It, it, yeah, county. okay. This is a county road and it's looking out onto your property. Yeah. Okay. And there's, there's a, a little handwritten X there. Uh -huh. um, is that about the rough location of yeah. the Bowers number one? That is it. Okay. Um, and so that it, it, when we're standing on this road right here, which direction are you facing? South. Okay. And so to the south of the Bowers number one, then that's your residence. Yes. Okay. And you can't really see it, but um, there, it looks like there may be another road down there that runs uh, parallel to your, I, I'm not sure what's growing there, but parallel to your irrigation There's system. A better picture of that. Okay. And we'll get to that here in okay. a second. This road right here, um, is that a county road? The one I'm standing, we're standing on. The the one that you're looking down on, not the one you're standing on. Uh, no, uh, okay. it's not anymore. Okay. It, it they uh, they deeded it to me. Okay. And it's it's my, the land beside it. They deeded it to me. Okay. And the road. And the road. Okay. The state of Kansas. Okay, so you own 
that road. Mm -hmm. You use that for your farming operation. Yeah. Okay. Is that road used um, by Apollo Energies? No. Okay. Not by anybody else. Okay. So how does Apollo access their Bowers number one well? That's come through my driveway. Okay. Okay. There used to be when the, before the overpass that road went by there and then you could drive right in there. Okay. The, the old county road. Okay. Um, going back now to the Bowers number one that's at issue here. I mean, there's been testimony here. It it's sat. It 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 hasn't been productive now for a while. Ever. And until they put a pumping unit in, I let them put a pumping unit in because they wanted to see if there was anything there. Well, it pumped about a month and then it was winter time and it was pumping fresh water and it froze the pipe and broke it. And about when did they put that pumping unit on it? Well, it was it was after the first of the year. Well, but what, what year? year? Yeah. You know, I'm not sure. They're saying the year. I don't remember the year would, would when they did it. I remember them doing it, but I don't remember what year. Okay. But what, it, there was no pumping unit there ever before. Was, yeah. well, let's, before we go on, um would it have been the, the year that they put the pumping unit on there would that have been closer to 2010 or 2002 i would say 2010 okay okay and did they put that pumping unit on there with did they ask you to oh yeah to do it yes. and you gave them permission yes. to put the pumping unit on there yes okay and how long did that pumping unit sit on there it wasn't there over two months because the pipe froze and broke. It was pumping fresh water. And why was it pumping fresh water? Do I don't know? know. It was, and it was pumping into the tank, and the pipe broke. Okay. Froze. But prior to putting that pumping unit out there, had there been a, a, a pumping unit on it? Never. Okay. Never since I've owned it. Since 1979 or yeah. whatever you said? Nothing was there except two red boxes. Wood boxes for the injection wells. One had the pump and one had the well head. That's all that was there. And was that those red boxes with the injection well pump, were those removed at some point? Yeah. Do you know about when that occurred? Uh, I think it was right when I put the irrigation system in there, they were no longer using it. So that would have been before Apollo acquired yeah. this lease. Yeah. Okay. Um, Has there been any, uh, there was some discussion here earlier about a, a squeeze job on the Bowers number one. Do you know when approximately that occurred? Do you recall that? Let me ask it that way. Do you recall? No. No. Okay. I, I knew they were doing something, but most, most time they didn't call us or anything. Okay. As long as I don't have to hear you, I don't care. But. Okay. Um. You know, well, let me, uh, I'm going to go now, John, to our exhibit. Let's do, this is actually the road. Okay, let's, I'll do exhibit D and then following that I'll do exhibit E. So, Exhibit D here, what, did you take this photograph? Okay, Tracy Chambers took the photograph. Um, where, where would, you're familiar with this location, where would Tracy have been standing when she took this photograph? On the county road that goes up to the overpass. Okay, so this is the same county road that she would have been standing on in the prior photograph we were looking at? Yes. Okay. And so what are we, it looks like there's a driveway, well, it looks like there's a residence and then an access point from the county road um, to your residence. Right. Um, is there any other access, way to access um, that road that runs no, parallel. The, the ditch is really deep. I mean, it's like it's a 
Well, 20 foot drop off the overpass ramp. Okay. And so, but this is the only, this, this would be the only way though, that you could, you could access the Bowers number one yes. well. Yeah. Okay. And this is the driveway that you use on a daily basis. Yes. Okay. All right. And so does it, does this road, I mean, it's, this is kind of a inarticulate way of putting it, but does it basically make from the county road to your field access kind of a U-turn yes. there? Yes. Okay. Let's go to the next photo here. All right. So understanding then that the road ma makes a U-turn looking at yeah. this. Did now you, you're facing north. Okay. And did you take this photo? Yeah. You took this one? She did. Tracy Chambers took this photo. Yeah. Okay. And so there's a road on the right-hand side. Would that be the county road? That... Yeah, that's the driveway and the county road. Okay. By so, the High Line pole. Okay. And so where you're standing now is essentially the Old U road. part of that U-turn we just referenced. Yes. Actually, about where we are now, we would have been standing on the old road. Okay. And so the left-hand side here, this, this is your... Yeah, this... that's the old road. Okay. That's the old can, county road. And could you maybe hold that up for the camera and then just point at what you're referring to as the old county road? Up here? Yeah. And so is so this road here... That's the road that goes up to my uh, irrigation. Okay, but but you own that property. Yes, they deeded it to me. Okay, okay. Was this though? Was that road that was deeded to you? Is that what Apollo Energies you and maybe even Braden Deem used? to access that Bowers number one well. Yes. Okay. And so that's the only way that they could go in yeah. and access that well. All right. Um, there was some discussion here earlier by, by Mr. Byers um, that there, and I think you kind of alluded to it, there is an attempt to bring this Bowers number one well into production. Um, but they were never able to pump the water off of it. No. Okay. Do you happen to know, was there any oil production that came from that? I didn't see any. Okay. Do you know, is there a tank battery location out there for this? No, they put a temporary tank out. Okay. Right by the road, by the old county road. Okay. Temporary tank. And how long did that temporary tank sit there? It went about two months. Okay. And how long it took them to put the unit in and pump it and then it froze and it couldn't do anything. Okay. Um, has there been any discussion between you and, and oh, let me back up here. Prior to this application being made, had there been any discussion between you and any person associated with Apollo Energies about the need or desire to tr to convert this Bowers number one well into an injection well. Uh, yes. And no. oh. when, well, well, you mean did they call me? Well, had at any point during the time that you've owned this property, had anybody indicated to you that no. this is going to be no. this is the first time deal? Okay, so you had never had there been any discussion that this Bowers number one well, like the design of the water flood unit. In, included using this well as an injection well. No. Okay. okay. I mean, nobody, it was it just wasn't used. Okay. And so the first, and if I'm incorrect, you're just tell me, but the first indication you got that anybody was um, intending to, you know, let me back up. After Apollo acquired this property, the first indication you got that Apollo intended to use this well as an injection well was this application. Mm -hmm. Okay. Had there ever been any discussion with you about need to protect oil migrating north off of the lease? No. No. Um, any discussion with you about uh, the existing saltwater injection well to the south of you 
running into issues or going down? No. Okay. Had there been any discussion with you about paying you any surface damages for converting this Bowers well into a uh, saltwater injection well? Um, in this last contract, you mean that? No. Has, has Apollo ever approached you and offered to pay you surface damages to convert this into an injection well? No, we haven't really talked about that. Okay. Um, there's also been some discussion here today about the uh, Bowers number two well that's located in your irrigated circle. Yes. Okay. Uh, do you happen to know when when did that well? It, it's a it, it's not an injection well, correct? No. Do you happen to know when that well last produced oil? Oh, it's been a couple of years. Okay. And can you be specific as far as a couple? Well, I would say two years. Okay. Because they had the whole propane to it, and I, I, I don't think it, I'm pretty sure two years at least. Okay, and was it consistently producing oil um, prior to that? Uh, well, it was running some of the time. Okay. And there had been... You know, we don't need to go into all the details I just here. Want, go ahead. But th there's been some discussion about you moving a pumping unit off of that Bowers number two here. Yes. Was that a was that a low profile pumping unit no. that you had moved off? No, it was like twelve foot, fourteen foot long. Okay. And do you acknowledge that you moved it off the off of the property? What's that? Did did you did you move the pumping well, unit yeah, off? I did. Okay. And what was your reason for doing that? Okay. That winter, that well had never been pumped ever since I owned it. Well, they brought, Jim came to me and he said, is it okay if we put a pumping unit out there and see if there's any oil there? I said, hey, yeah. Hey, hey, let me back up here. When you say that winter, what do you know? Well, about it was, uh, it was, it was I, I don't know the year for sure. I know it had to be, uh, oh God, it had to be before 2008 because the tornado came through there. Okay. And I think the low pro might have been there then and pumped some before the tornado because the tornado took my irrigation system. Okay. Okay. So, well, about the tall pumping unit. Uh, I said, yeah, but, but you're going to have to get it off there when I need to irrigate. He said, okay, I'll get it off there. Whenever, you just tell me when you want it off of there, and I'll take it off. I said, I'm not going to let that thing out there. I don't want it out there. Uh, you get a low pro or whatever. And he, uh, so I planted my cotton on it, and I, I called him. I said, you need to get that pumping unit off there. And he said, I don't have to do that. You don't have irrigation clause. I said, we had an agreement. I said, you get it off there or I'm going to drag it out of there or turn it over so I can get over top of it. He said, you better not do that. And he wouldn't move it. And my cotton was hurting. And I had the rods pulled one day. And I hooked the tractor on it. It was all unhooked. Drug it out in his pasture. So you didn't steal it or anything like that? No, just... what I do with it. Okay. Um... And I didn't damage it either. They... They accused me of damage. It. Oh, and and we're not we're not here on a, a criminal trial or anything I just like want to that. Tell you what I've had I, I understand. Um, and since that occurred, though, has that Bowers number two been operational? Part time, but uh, we had to. He put the low pro on, which I agreed, and he said we're going to have to build a little a uh, little ramp about this high of dirt or. But I put black top on it and I put rock on top of it so that it wouldn't sink down with dirt and never had any trouble. It went over it every time. Well, then he pulled the rods out and he uh, worked it over, put it back, and uh, of course had to cut the polish rod off the first time because it wouldn't clear. Well, he left the polish rod stick out and tipped my system over. I went to him and I said, hey, he called me, he said, your, your ramp must have sunk down. I said, no, it's got rock on it. It did not. He said, well, I said, why didn't you cut that polish rod off? He said, well, it's $200 rod. I didn't want to cut it off. 
but it, it crashed two towers of a new system, but he had to pay for them. Okay. But you so haven't had any trouble since then. But okay. But that well though, um, have you had, I mean, has there been any issue with it? Uh, the, the producing well, has there been any issue with saltwater spills or anything like well, that? Well, we had a pipe break. He had a pipe break one time going out of my field into the uh, tanks or whatever they put and broke out in the middle of the field. It was old and it busted in salt water and, and uh, had to fix that. Okay. Um, did you fix that or did no, Apollo do that? He could. Okay. And then we had to put stuff on the soil to try to get it to grow again. Okay. And so is it a the prospect of having a, a, a whole saltwater injection well on your property? Um, does that does that give you concern for your farming operation? It sure does because mm -hmm. of the things that I've had trouble with already. Okay. I mean, uh, it's... Uh, our house wells there, our irrigation wells there. Uh, is there. When I was a kid, they had a well from my house, our house and uh, had a casing leak and it ruined our water well a quarter mile away. We had to haul water for four years and I never forgot that. And I don't need any of that kind of stuff around my house. I mean, something can happen. It ain't worth it to me. I mean, they can keep what oil they get off of me. Okay. I don't believe I have any further questions here for Mr. Pricer. Thank you, Mr. Nicolai. Uh, Cross-examination, Mr. Eisenhower. Yes, thank you. Mr. Pricer, it's my understanding you bought this property in either 1979 or 1980, correct? No, it was 78 or nine, time the paperwork. Okay. Out. Did you get a title opinion? When you bought this property from an attorney? Uh, I guess I borrowed the money from FSA. Okay. So they would have required a title opinion, wouldn't they? I suppose. When you got that title opinion, it would have told you that there are oil and gas leases on this property. And it would have also told you that this Cunningham water flood unit had been filed of record in 1970. You remember seeing those? No. Okay. But they were filed a record with the Register of Deeds Office in Pratt County. You understand that, correct? Uh, yeah. And you've leased property. You own other property, correct? Yeah. And you've leased it to oil and gas companies before, haven't you? Yes. And you get paid a bonus for that, correct? Well, yeah, per acre. Per acre. Sure you do. You get paid so much an acre for signing an oil and gas lease, don't you? Yeah. Have you ever read an oil and gas lease you sign? No, I haven't. I sent them to my lawyer. Okay. Well, let me tell you, in the granting clause, which is the first clause of an oil and gas lease, it gives the lessee, which is, in this case, Apollo Energies, the right to ingress and egress and a whole lot of other rights. Have you ever stopped Apollo Energies from coming on your property? No. Did you tell an employee of Apollo Energies within the last 30 days that the only way he was going to uh, dispose of salt water on your property was over your dead body? Well, it was more than 30 days ago. But you told him that, didn't you? Yep. Okay. You under and your property is irrigated not by a circle irrigation system, like I said earlier, it's by a windshield wiper system, correct? Same thing. It goes back and forth, right? Yeah. Okay. That's because you've only got you're only irrigating 65 acres, right? That's all they all that's all okay. you ever irrigate. Excuse me? That's all you ever irrigate with a half a circle. Well, in a half a circle, but in a normal quarter, you'd irrigate 133 acres, correct? Mm -hmm, approximately. Okay. When you bought this property in 1978 or 1979, you knew there was a oil and gas leases on it. You know there's a water flood on it. And you know, you knew that you bought it subject to that, didn't you? 
well, I didn't have any minerals. I didn't get the minerals. The, the Lucy May Randolph kept the minerals until she died, and then they gave them to me. Okay. So when you bought the surface back in 1978 or 79, you didn't get the minerals, but you knew you bought it subject to oil and gas leases and this flood water flood unit. Yes. Okay. You indicated that Apollo never talked to you about whether they were going to turn this into an injection well or anything like that. Yeah. And all your other oil and gas leases that you have with other operators, has anybody ever sat down with you and consulted with you as to what they can do on your property? That's why I take it to the lawyer. The question is, has any oil operator ever sat down with you and discussed what operations they were going to undertake on your property? Well, yes, but who? Who? Yes. Well, whoever was buying the lease, I had, had several of them. Name one. Unit. Huh? Unit. Unit Petroleum. They didn't drill well on your property. They leased it. They didn't drill well, did they? No, they leased it. Okay, so they didn't discuss any operations with you on your property because they didn't do anything on your property. Well, I have other people at least to me that did drill. They didn't discuss the location with you, did they? Yes, they did. Palomino's one of them. Okay, did you have an irrigation system on those, what, yes. uh, those pieces of property? Yeah, I did. And normally oil, good oil operators will talk to you and put them in the corners so they don't bother your system, correct? Yeah, okay. but this was the corner. This was the corner system, okay. and they asked me where to drill it. Okay. Do you understand that Mr. Byers at any time could have went right in the middle of your field and drilled an oil and gas well on the leases that you bought this land subject to? Well, I don't know. He had to get an irrigation clause. There was no irrigation clause in this oil and gas lease that was signed back in the 30s. Okay. We didn't, we didn't even have irrigation in the 30s. Really? Yeah. Correct? Well, I guess. Yeah, no. Flood. Okay. So you bought the property knowing this. It's subject to leases. And Mr. Byers could have drilled one right in the middle of your irrigation system. And you didn't have any right to stop it. And he hasn't done that, has he? Nope. Because there ain't no oil there. Okay. Are you a geologist? Nope. Are you in the oil business? Nope. Okay. Now, you did pull off a pumping unit and you said you put it in his pasture. Yeah. Does Jim Byers own property out there? Oh, yeah. Next to your property? Yes. Okay. He bought it after I was there. Is there any way he could uh, get access to your property going through his property? Huh? Yeah, I guess. Who are you talking to when you're supposed to be answering the questions? I'm not talking to anybody. Well, you keep looking to your right to see what she has to say. No. I mean, I, he owns land beside me. I don't know if he can come in there or not. Okay. Right now, the only way to access your property is through your driveway, correct? Yes. And do you understand under the terms of the oil and gas lease, he can drive right through there every day of the month? Well, maybe he could, but they don't seem right to me. And you were arrested for what you did on his property, weren't you? Yep. Trespassing. I took the man at his word. Who did, uh, you said they deeded the property to you. Is that Pratt County? State. I told Excuse you me? the state of Kansas. Okay. You said it was a county road. 
So the state of Kansas wrote you. The state got the bought the loan. Bought the what? They bought. They had the road and they bought the land from the landowner that they deeded to me. Okay. So you got a you got a deed from the Department of Transportation, correct? Yes. Okay. This uh, saltwater disposal well that apparently leaked and you had to haul water for four years, that didn't have anything to do with Apollo Energies, did it? No, it was, it was way away from here. Okay. It was just a learning experience. Okay. That's all I have, Commission. All right. Uh, th thank you, Mr. Eisenhower. Uh, cross-examination, Mr. Marsh. I don't have any cross-examination, Chair Dean. All right, thank you. Let's see if commissioners have any questions. I'll begin with Commissioner Duffy. Good afternoon. Just real quick, Mr. Nicolay. So the road that was deeded to you by the state of Kansas through KDOT, are there um, any restrictions or it was just deeded to you in name, correct? Well, yes. And as such, that um, was a public road before, is that correct? Yes. And did the um, operator use that road on a regular basis? Uh, yes. Did the um, natural gas company, I, I'm, the name is escaping me, but Northern. Did, yeah, Northern. Did they also use the road as well? No. No. No, and they could still use the county road because they didn't take it away. Okay. Are they using your road? They're right using now? the other side of the road, not okay. my. Okay. okay. Um, can the operator access any of the other wells um, that are on that property, the, the Bowers 2, the Royce 1, the Royce 5, can they access those wells using any other road? Yes. yes. But to access the um, Bowers One, they need to use your road. Is that correct? They need to go through my drive. Yes. You you call it your drive. So um, I'm looking at the picture that does have the front of your house. So what portion of that do you consider your driveway? The portion where it looks like it's completely flooded with water, is that the drive that you're referring to or is that's it- water, that's rock. Oh, that's rock. Oh, okay. So where the lone tree is, yeah. is, is that part of the drive, you know, yeah. the bottom half of the U? Yes. You consider that your drive? Yes. Okay, because it's turning off the new road that was built. Yes. Okay. Um, that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. <laughs> Commissioner French. I have no questions. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Presser. I had I just have one question for you. Basically, um, I'm trying to reconcile your testimony and Mr. Byers' testimony. <clears throat> um, Mr. Byers, were, were, you, were you present during Mr. Byers' testimony this afternoon? Yes. Okay. Mr. Byers has testified that this number one Bowers well, he started pumping it in 2002, and basically, as I understood it, pumped it off and on until 2010. Yeah. Uh, and then, <clears throat> at which point, I believe they uh, conducted the uh, squeeze cementing job. Um, do you have a different recollection 
no, yeah, one occurred was, between two, 2000 no, and 2010? No, there was never a pumping unit out there. Nothing. It was just a casing. And the fresh water well was used for injection well. There was nothing there. My irrigation system goes right over top of it. There was nothing. The only time there was a pumping unit there is when they squeezed it or whatever they did. They put a pumping unit in there, a tall, well, it was it, the system wouldn't have cleared it, and we knew that. Uh, it was just a temporary thing for to see if there's any oil. And it was in the winter time, and they set a tank out there to pump the water into, and the pipe froze on the on the way from the pumping unit to the tank and busted. It was fresh water. There was no pumping unit out there ever. Okay. Well, I, I am confused about this point. Um, <laughs> Mr. Myers, could, could you bring up uh, Mr. Presser's pre file testimony, page two? Yes, one moment. Can you see that, Mr. Presser? No, here, I've got page two here. Okay. Okay. Uh, this is your, this is your pre-file testimony. And specifically, I'm, I, I'm looking at lines 24 through 28. Okay. Okay, on 24, and I'm, I'm trying to quote accurately here from your testimony, it says, Apollo installed a pumping unit on the Bowers number one sometime after the growing season in 2003 and pumped the well for a short period of time before the line between the well and the tank on our property ruptured because the water was fresh and the line froze. Mm -hmm. It continues. Once the unit stopped pumping after this line rupture, Apollo promptly removed the pumping unit from the number one Bowers well and the well set unused and unequipped since that time. Yes. Okay, I'm trying to reconcile okay, that. Maybe, maybe the years are wrong, but that's how it worked. I mean, that's how it was done. It was. What do you mean their years were wrong? I'm well, sorry. I don't. I, all I know that since I've owned that property, the only time there was a pumping unit on there was a short period of time. I'm not, I get the year, the years. I don't, I can't tell you what year for sure. That's just what we came up with, but it was only there for two months. Okay. All um, right. I think it, the way it was. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off, sir. But, uh, that's just the way it was. It was, there was only a pumping unit there for like two months the whole time I owned the land. Okay. Very good. Uh, I have no further questions. Um, Mr. Nicolay, any redirect? I, I don't have any redirect. Thank you. Uh, very well. I think we've reached the end of your testimony. Um, <clears throat> Mr. Presser, uh, we appreciate very much your appearing here this afternoon, and you are virtually excused. Okay, thank you. Thank you. We have two witnesses yet to go. We haven't been going for quite an hour. Let's go on just a little bit further. We may take another break before we're done, but let's go ahead and continue. So I would turn to you, Mr. Nicolay, and ask if you would please call your next witness. Okay. And just to make sure, I, I'm not going to have Ms. Chambers on here for very long, so I, I think it'd probably be a good time to take a break after she's done, and then we can go on to Ms. Schaefer. Sounds like a good idea. We'll try to do that. Okay. All right. Can I have uh, Ms. Chambers swore in here? Yes, Mr. Chambers, if you would raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear that the testimony that you are about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help you God or under penalty of perjury? I do. Thank you. All right, Ms. Chambers. Um, we've been here now for, oh, two hours and 45 minutes approximately. Have you been sitting in on um, all of the testimony that was given today? I have. Okay. Um, with that out of the way, um, we're here on the application of Apollo Energy to convert the Bowers number one into a saltwater injection well. Well, 
um, being on the northeast quarter of 32811. Um, are you familiar with that property? Yes. Okay. And, and why are you familiar with that? I live there. Okay. How long have you lived? Um, you live at the residence there? Yes. Okay. And how long have you lived there? Since 2001. Okay. Um, are you involved in the, in, uh, are, are you Mr. Pricer's significant other? Yes. Okay. Um, and are you involved in Mr. Pricer's farming operation? Yes. Okay. Um, do you have any other, are, are, are you employed anywhere else? Do you have any other? Um... Not anymore. I retired from the oil field. Okay. And, and what was it that you did in the oil field? I uh, have owned roustabout company and then also saltwater trucks and hauled saltwater okay. to disposal wells. Okay. And about how long did you work as a roustabout oh. and haul saltwater? Uh, from 1976 to 2020. Okay. Um, and there seems to be some confusion here between testimony and uh, written testimony and in-person testimony as to this Bowers number one. And maybe you can help us clear this up if, if, if you can. If you can't, that's all right. Um, but uh, do you happen to know when... When was a pump, when you first moved out to the residence there, was there a pumping unit on the Bowers number one well? Okay. Um, do you happen to recall when um, there would have been a pumping unit installed on the Bowers number one? Unfortunately, I do not remember the year. And in the written testimony, I believe that 2003 came from Mr. Byer's testimony that it was an injection well until 2003, and then he started to produce it. That's probably where the 2003 came from. Okay. But I think it would probably be closer to 2010 that they put the pump in. The okay. But is your recollection of that there was a pumping unit on this for only 30 or 60 days? That, that's what Mr. Pricer testified to. Is that your recollection? Yes, that's an approximate time. It was a okay. short period of time in that entire year. Okay. It was not a low profile unit. No. Okay. And was that done with with you and Mr. Pricer's permission? Yes. And there was discussed. Yes. Okay. And um, but other than that, thirty or sixty days, however long, do you recall there ever having been a pumping unit on the Bowers Number One well? No. Oh. And that's the only time that they asked permission or said they were going to move in there and do anything. They never ask again. Okay. Um, and without understanding that I'm not, I'm really just asking this based on, on your personal experience here. Um, do you have any concerns with converting the Bowers number one well into a saltwater injection well. I have major concerns with it. Not only that they'll have to come in and make a good big U-turn going through the yard, which is going to be, you know, hard on that road. But, um, and I realize that the lease allows them to do that, but that is going to be an absolute detriment to our property value to have that tank battery north of the trees, to have the oil field trucks coming in all the time. And, and that coupled with your, it's not a possibility that you're gonna have a spill. Spills happen all the time, not just to small operators, but to majors and to, I mean, that's what I did for a living was go out there and pick up the spills. It happens all the time due to mechanical failure, uh, you know, old tanks, I mean, you could go on and on about what causes them. I've even seen firewalls with liners that varmints have got in there and dug holes. And when they had a 300 barrel spill, it didn't stay in the firewall. It went right out that hole into the farmer's field. Sure. It happens and it happens all the time. Okay. That's just... Kind of the risk, though, of, of oil and gas development operations, correct? True. Okay. Um, had there been any discussion with you 
uh, during any point that you've lived out there about the need to convert this well into a saltwater injection well? Absolutely not. Okay. And when did you first learn of this? When I received a letter in the mail. Do you know approximately when that would have occurred? Um, March, end of March. Of, of what year? 2022. Okay. Did you receive a notification prior to March of 22? No. No. Okay. I don't believe I have anything further here. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Nicolai. Uh, Cross-examination, Mr. Eisenhower. Just briefly, uh, Ms. Chambers, you've been in oil business for a long time, or you were in oil business a long time, correct? Correct. You're very familiar with oil and gas leases. Correct. Have you been a royalty owner under an oil and gas lease? Yes, I am now. And uh, have you also owned working interests or overrides? Yes. Have you ever seen an oil and gas lease that states that the lessee has to get permission from the lessor about his operations prior to doing so? And I'm talking about the base oil and gas lease, not an exhibit A that was put on there. Have you ever seen a base oil and gas lease that requires that? Uh, I don't believe so. Okay. And when Mr. Pricer bought this property, he knew it was subject to oil and gas leases. Correct? That's correct. And yep. you bought you've bought property before. Uh, have you ever bought property that had an oil and gas lease on it? No. Okay. Would you do you know as a property owner that if there was would have been an oil and gas lease on it, that you better read the terms of it because you buy it subject to that lease? Uh, yes. is uh, you understand that Apollo Energies can enter the property, ingress and egress under the lease. Is there a better way of entering this property other than making that U-turn? Is it possible to create a different road uh, with, because the way I understood your uh, Larry Pricer's testimony is he owns also the grass between uh, the one road and the, what used to be a county road. Is that right? That's correct. Okay. Would you agree to allow Apollo Energies to create a different road that, which would uh, lead directly uh, horizontally with the Bowers well so that uh, your driveway would not have to be used to access that well? There's only one way to that road, to any road, and it's through our driveway. Our driveway connects with the county road south of the overpass. I've seen the picture. You couldn't cut a different road? No, it's an overpass. It's got big, tall sides on it. I don't know. Uh, south of the overpass, you couldn't cut a, a road into that? No. That's a long... Okay. But you do understand under the terms that if that's the only way to get in and out, they have a right to do it. Um, I understand that, but we're talking about a lease written in 1939 also. And you bought, and Mr. Pricer bought the property subject to it. True. Didn't you? That's all I have. All right, thank you. Cross-examination, Mr. Marsh. Thank you, Chair Dean. I don't have any cross-examination questions. Thank you. Let's see if there are any commissioner questions. Commissioner Duffy. I have no questions. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner French. No questions. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I have no questions either. Um, Mr. Nicolay, uh, redirect. Uh, just one question real quick here. Thank you. Um, well, I, I, one line of question, I should say. Mr. Byers owns the property to the south of you, correct? Yes. Uh, yeah. Um, he owns, well, I'm not positive what Mr. Byers owns. Okay. But he bought property south of us, yes. Okay. Um, would it be pro possible to access these, either one of these wells from the south? 
through Mr. Byers' property. You're still going to have to come on our property. I well, mean, once you get sure, I understand that. Yes. But would it be nest? Could they go behind your residence um, to access it that way? I suppose I don't. Have to drive across the field. Yeah, they would have to go across the field. Um, I suppose there might be some way they could get in there, but but that really doesn't the access doesn't really address the possibility of the contamination, the spills. Uh, understood. understood. I, I still would have an issue with it, even if there was a different access. Okay, I don't have anything further. Thank you. All right, thank you, Mr. Eisenhower. Recross. Just one question, Miss Chambers. You wouldn't be happy with turning this into an injection well under any circumstance, would you? No, and I can't imagine that anybody here would be comfortable with an injection well operated by Apollo that close to their residence. Okay. No other questions. All right. Thank you. Uh, I believe this uh, concludes your testimony, uh, Ms. Chambers. Uh, we thank you very much for your testimony this afternoon, and you are virtually excused. Uh, we are going to... Uh, uh, take uh, Mr. Nicolay up on his suggestion. Uh, we will take a, a, a brief recess. It is now, uh, by my reckoning, uh, 2.53. When do we resume at 3.10? We're in recess until 3.10. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let me show you the restaurant. Please, everyone mute. I'll go ahead and mute Mr. Eisenhower's screen. Thank you.
Mr. Eisenhower, just a heads up, uh, when you were walking away, I, um, I put your screen on mute. Um, I don't know whether you've worked uh, with muting and unmuting this before, but the way you should be able to unmute it is uh, move your cursor to the picture of yourself on the screen. And on the upper right hand corner, it will say uh, uh, mute or unmute. And uh, if you press on it, it should get you live again. I'll do it this way too. I can press a button that says ask to unmute and that might pop that up for you so that you can do it. I'll go that way since, uh, since you're still there. Got it. There we go. Perfect. Okay, thank you. You bet.
All right, very good. I think everyone's here. Commissioner Duffy, are you here? And Commissioner French. All right, Commissioner Duffy. You're it. Okay. I'm Very here. Good. I'm sorry. No, we're not going to leave without you. Um, it's now 310. We're back on the record. Uh, before uh, I turn to Mr. Marsh and have him call his witness, I want to turn to uh, counsel for both of the parties and ask you if you would uh, wish to um, request the admission of your client's pre-filed testimony into the record. If so, we can do that at this time. Mr. Eisenhower? Yes, please. Do you want to identify what it is you're asking us to We request that uh, the pre-filed testimony of Jim Byers as president of Apollo Energy Inc. be admitted as an exhibit, including the exhibits A through D. Wait a minute. A through D uh, that are attached to it. Okay. Uh, is there any objection? Chair Keen, if I may. Um, yes, please. John. Chair Key, John Myers here, if I may. I believe he's got some rebuttal testimony, uh, pre filed rebuttal testimony too. Mr. Eisner. I would like to also admit the, pre the rebuttal testimony, which was filed by Jim Byers as president of Apollo Energy Inc. Thank you, John. Very good. Is there any objection? Without I objection. Object. Thank you. Without objection, they're all admitted. Uh, Mr. Nicolay, let me turn to you, ask you the same question. If you would like to uh, request the admission of uh, your client's pre-filed testimony at this time. Uh, yes, Chair, we would move to admit our uh, both our pre-filed testimony with exhibits A through E and then the uh, rebuttal testimony as well. Thank you. No objection. Okay, without objection, it's admitted. All right, very well. Uh, let's turn to our final witness for the day. And for that, I will turn to you, Mr. Marsh, and ask that you please call your witness. Thank you, Chair Keen. Staff, Commission staff calls Julie Schaefer to the stand. If we can have her sworn in. Uh, Julie, if you would, please raise your right hand. You swear that the testimony you, feel you will give this afternoon will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help you God or under penalty of perjury. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Uh, can you please say your full name for the record? Julie Schaefer. And Ms. Schaefer, by whom and in what capacity are you employed? The Conservation Division of the Kansas Corporation Commission. And what is your work address? 266 North Main, Suite 220, Wichita, Kansas. Are you the same Julie Schaefer who caused to be filed in this docket testimony consisting of seven pages on August 26, 2022? Yes. Was this testimony created by you or at your direction? Yes. Now that you're under oath, do you have any corrections to make to your testimony? I do not. If I asked you the same questions contained in your testimony today, would your answers be the same? Uh, yes, they will be. Um, it appears they have submitted uh, two of the two of the uh, uh, documents that they needed to of the three that I uh, noted in my testimony. So that would be the only change. And which two documents are those? Uh, they submitted a cement bond log and a U8, uh, amended U8 stating the leases. Okay, and with that additional information, do you swear that the answers contained in your pre-file testimony were intruded to, to the best of your knowledge? Yes. Okay, at this time, <clears throat> excuse me, Staff moves for the admission of Ms. Julie Schaefer's pre-filed testimony filed on August 26, 2022 into the formal record. Is there any objection? No. No objection. Without object pardon me, without objection, it's admitted. Thank you, Chair. Uh, at this time, staff tenders the witness for cross-examination. All right, uh, very well. Um, I'll turn first for cross-examination. Mr. Eisenhower, please. Uh, Ms. Schaefer, I only have one question. Does your uh, file show an email 
from Josh Reneker to Michael Meyer, dated January 17, 2022, requesting additional time to comply with the November 24, 2021 letter. And does it further show an email from Michael Meyer to Josh Reneker giving Apollo Energies until March 21st of 2022 to comply with one of the three options? No, sir. I have not seen that documentation. I have only been given the application from the Conservation Division. Okay, thank you. That's all I have. Okay. All right, thank you. Uh, <clears throat> Mr. Nikolai. Thank you. And I, and I think this will be somewhat brief here. Um, Ms. Schaefer, given what was filed and provided by Apollo today, uh, what do you believe remains to be completed um, for this application to be processed? Uh, although they have submitted the two documents that I just stated, uh, I have not had time to review those. So I would like to have some sufficient time to review those two documents. In addition, they would still need to provide a uh, district staff witness, MIT, and uh, depending on how today goes, the potential for a casing integrity test as well. Okay. Um, and how, and I think it's probably in your pre-filed testimony, so I apologize. How long have you been employed with the Kansas Corporation Commission? It was one year ago in November. Okay. Um, do you, uh, in, in your experience with the KCC and then your prior experience in the oil and gas industry, I mean, would you say that it's common to see uh, wells that sit unused for lengthy periods of time, 10, sometimes 20 years, um, be denied an application for temporary abandonment only to then seek a change of the use of the well? Uh, of course, I've only been here a short time, so I haven't seen a lot of that, but I believe that... Um, there is conversion from old uh, injector and vice versa. Okay. Um, understanding that you need to review, you know, review the, the bond log. Um, was there anything in uh, either the bond log that you have had an opportunity to review or the testimony that was presented here today that would change your ultimate recommendation that was made in your pre-filed testimony? Was there anything with the bond log that I haven't seen? I'm sorry, that was a poor question. Let me, let me, that was kind of a two part question. Let me ask it this way. You, you sat through all of today's testimony, correct? Correct. Okay. Um, was there anything that you heard in today's testimony um, that, that would change your recommendation to the commission as to whether or not this application should be granted? I don't believe I've heard anything that would change it per se, uh, as long as cement is sufficient to protect the fresh and usable water, then that's what we're after. Okay. And understanding that I may have misheard this. And so if I did, please correct me. Um, I believe though, there is testimony here today indicating that there may not be any cement behind the surface casing. Was that your understanding? That is what it sounded from potentially um, the operators that there was no cement from 1850 to surface, but I would not, I would have to verify to make sure that you could see surface casing cement through the annulus between the production casing and the surface casing. So that would have to be reviewed further. Okay. In the event, though, that that was accurate, I mean, would that have an impact on your recommendation? Yes. If there is no surface casing cement, we would have them dig down to verify, and uh, there would need to be to protect surface waters, the, the fresh and usable water reservoir. Okay. And so if it was determined, though, that there was not any cement behind the surface casing, would that change your recommendation on whether or not to grant this application? Yes, absolutely. 
would you recommend, if that was the case, would you recommend to grant this application? If what were the case? I, I'm sorry. If it, if, if it was determined that there was no cement behind the surface casing, would you recommend to the commission to grant this application? Of course not. We would not uh, grant an application with no cement to protect the fresh and usable water. I don't have anything further. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mr. DeClay. Does he have any questions from the commissioners? I'll begin first with Commissioner Duffy. <clears throat> Good afternoon. Hello, Julie. Hello. I don't think we've had the privilege, so it's it's nice to see you. Um, let me just make sure I'm I'm clear. Mr. Eisenhower was asking you some questions about a text you would have received or an email on your phone regarding um, uh, an MIT that would have been done in January, correct? I am not uh, for sure exactly how it would have been, but I have not received anything besides what the conservation division here at central office has sent me um, everything that was included in the application. Okay. Um, so, let me ask this though. If um, an operator was wanting to perform, whether it was an MIT um, and one day and, um, but the weather just changed very quickly, is there anything that prohibits them from calling you all back up to come back out and um, review that MIT? First off, uh, all of that information goes through district. So they have to set up their uh, mechanical integrity test through the district office, not through me personally. Okay. So they would be in, in conversation with district and district would tell them uh, how it would work out for them. Okay, but typically if one day is bad and the next day or later on that week, um, do you know the standard practice then? Do they just pick another day to come and witness? Yeah, I think it depends uh, on the district and uh, how they're staffed and the operator and they would most likely try to uh, witness something like this that's been uh, out of commission for this, this period, length of period. Okay. Um, as I believe the operator testified that they had just turned um, some of the prerequisites that you had in your testimony into you just recently, like just in last day or so, um, how practically, how long does it take you to make a determination as to um, the the information that you've received? Like I stated a moment ago, I would like to review the, the bond log a little better and, and speak with uh, some other people that may have more knowledge on, on the surface casing issue. Uh, otherwise, the UA, uh, that would not take long at all to review. And then um, potentially, you know, if we question the surface casing cement, we would have get with the operator and have them uh, dig it up, verify semen at surface. Okay, very good. Thank you. That's all I have. I appreciate it. It was a pleasure yes, to meet you. Thank you. Same. Mr. French. Just one question. I think it's more of a clarification. Um, in your questioning from Mr. Nicolay, I think there was some discussion of if, if certain conditions popped up um, whether your recommendation would, would be a yes or a no to granting of the application. And I think you indicated it, it was a no. And maybe just for clarity's sake, um, I, I guess I'm trying to follow, you, you said you'd like to review the bond log of the cementing and see what the surface casing looks like. Would your recommendation then be, if, if some additional need, work needs to be done, your recommendation would be a, a flat no, or your recommendation would be approval subject to um, further work or, yes, or further course. conditions? Yes, of course. I mean, <clears throat> if we can't verify surface casing cement, 
at surface. Uh, there will need to be additional work, like I just uh, explained to Ms. Duffy. They would have to go out and dig around the, the wellhead down to cement to verify the surface casing is cemented to surface. Okay. All right. Before Thank I can make a judgment, for sure. Very good. Thank you. That's all I have. Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, good afternoon, Julie. I guess it's my turn. Um, yes. John, if you could, uh, let's screen share um, Julie's pre filed direct and rebuttal testimony, uh, page three, please. <clears throat> One moment. My my internet connection at the office is a little unstable. Mr. Keene, did you say, Chair Keene, did you say page three of uh, of her testimony? Is that what you requested? Yes, please. Okay, hold on a moment. My apologies. The pre-file direct and rebuttal are all part of one document. Bring that up just a little bit, John. Now scan, scan the other direction. Down, I guess. <laughs> right there, right there, that's fine. Go, 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 go. You went past, back, go back. Freeze it right there. Don't touch a thing, no. <laughs> Back up, John. Back, back. Up. My apologies, Chair Keen. Again, my internet, my internet's going. I'm, I'm only hearing some of what you're saying. I, hopefully, this is where you'd like it to be. Okay, go back. Scan, scan down a little further. I want you to pick up line 18 and put it. In. Freeze right there. Just stop, stop, stop. Perfect. Uh, Julie, can you see this? Yes. Uh, let's take a look at line 18. Here's the one thing probably from all of your testimony that really caught my attention right off the bat. And if you look at line 18, it says, second, there are no cement records for this well. That was an enormous red flag when I saw that because uh, the, have you, have, have you been, have you been uh, tuned into our proceedings throughout the day? Yes. Uh, as you know, from that plus your own review of the records, the records are replete with statements that we have surface casing that was cemented in with 200 sacks of cement and the long string was cemented in with 300 sacks. And so the fact that there appear to be no cementing records was, as I say, was, an, was, was, was a giant red flag for me. Not that I'm terribly surprised given the age of the well, frankly, uh, nor that I, I mean, I think I understand, is it not the case that the cement bond log was being asked to be run as a basically alternative method or substitute means for verifying cementing? Yes, sir. That is yeah. correct. Yeah. So um, uh, I guess my concern was that so many records from the applications for the TA status to the application for this permit kept repeating this over and over that we had we had this cementing. Um, so uh, uh, is that unusual for wells of this age when they when their application is made for uh, injection permits? Uh, <clears throat> I don't I don't know how unusual it is. We have certainly run across other wells like this and we do in this scenario have them run a cement bond log uh, dig up the, the wellhead to make sure there is surface casing cement, things like that nature to, um, to verify for those purposes. But I don't believe it's, it's uncommon. Right, okay. Well, I, I, I won't belabor that anymore here. Um, uh, you can take the screen share away, John, if you would please. The first two questions I was intending to ask you, you, <laughs> you answered right off the bat. Uh, uh, and that was, the first question was, have you seen the revised U8 and is it compliant? And I guess the answer to that is not as yet. Not as yet, no. I would like to have time to, to review and make sure. 
Okay. And the other question I had is, but is, is you've had if you had seen or reviewed the number one Bowers uh, bond law that was run, and if so, did it satisfy your concerns about C Manning? And I think you need not repeat the testimony that you've had with respect to uh, either uh, Mr. Nicolay's questioning or Commissioner French. Uh, because I will just add my two cents worth in what I think is a level of, of um, importance and concern that I have. And I share what I think was your concern. And that is, uh, if there is no evidence from the bond log of cementing of the surface casing, then further inquiry has to be made, I think, in the interest, in everybody's interest, including that of the operator. So uh, I'm, I'm, I'm glad that you're doing that. And I think um, I, I appreciate your response uh, to that uh, uh, specifically in terms of what your, your approach would be, your response to Commissioner French. So let me ask you a couple of other questions. My, my line of question is very brief. Um, let's take the general run of the mill, tubing and packer injection completions. Um, how close must the packer be in such completions to the top of the zone of injection? I believe it is requested to be within 50 feet of perforations or in this case, open hole. Okay, and why is that? Why is, why is it there, would there be a requirement that we have a, um, a packer setting that is relatively close to the, to the top of the injection zone? I, I would say, um, in case there are uh, holes in that in that interval, we're not staying above them. We want to test as much uh, of the tubing or casing uh, as possible. And would it be not to try to isolate the injection actually to the zone of injection and not somewhere else? Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, and my next question is, um, I really need to call on your experience uh, heavily here. If we have wells that are proposed to be used for injection that have casing that has been squeezed to cemented previously, as is the case in the number one Bowers, is there any benefit or is there any interest in the protection of the freshwater resources of the state for the commission to require a casing integrity test in addition to a mechanical integrity test? What is your opinion? Good strongly suggest, uh, like you, that it, it's, it would be in the best interest of everyone to make sure that we're protecting uh, to go ahead and test the, the casing as it's, it's already shown to have potentially 150 feet of holes in the casing that has been squeezed off already. So in the, in the protection of the, the fresh and usable water zones, it would be smart. Thank you. I, I'm, I must say for the record, I'm sensitive to and I'm concerned with the costs that uh, operators incur in complying with these uh, injection well uh, permit requirements. It requires a lot of money. I know that uh, in uh, uh, this line tubing that they're proposing to use, I think the seal tight line, line uh, 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 tubing, this is incredibly expensive today. These things, the whole, all these undertakings and the labor as well. And so um, I, I'm not suggesting this as a means to try to add to those costs, but I, I am concerned because of the nature of the well about the nature of the risk. And that's, that's really what, what, what gave rise to, to my line of questioning there. Uh, have you had occasion to witness casing integrity tests? I have. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Tell me kind of how that works. And here's what I'm getting at in a nutshell. The operators indicated that as recently as Friday, in order to conduct this bond log, they've sealed off the producing zone and filled the casing with water. Um, isn't that basically the same prerequisite to performing a casing integrity test? I have not ran a casing integrity test and I've only been a part of a few MITs. Um, so on the casing side, I am not sure. So I don't know that I would be uh, the most professional person to, to give my opinion on how that's run, Mr. Keene. 
Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, <clears throat> but correct me if I'm wrong. The, 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 the distinction here is the casing integrity test is to isolate the casing and determine that it has integrity up to the, the pressure points that are required by our regs and our operations. The MIT is intended to test the totality of the injection equipment as it sets there. That would be the tubing, the packer, the packer shirt, all, all surface um, uh, connections, um, and the tubing string itself and the casing. Is that right? Yes. Um, all right. Um, I believe that concludes, hold on one second, let me check. Uh, I, I do have one more question for you. I don't, I don't, I don't intend it to, for, to be a leading one. Just going back to this uh, point that uh, Mr. Nicolay was uh, questioning you about and uh, Director French as well. And that's the uh, <clears throat> bond log. Um, and I'm gonna ask you a question because I don't know, but I take it, that is the bond log, if there's cement, or there's a void, it, I would guess that it would show that void, even if it had to go through the production string to try to identify cement on the outer side of the surface casing. Do you know if that's correct? I, I want to verify for sure, because I thought that as well. Um, so my initial thought was that there was a problem, gonna be a problem, but I would like to verify that to make sure Sure, very good. Um, well, that concludes all of my questions. I appreciate your patience with my questions as well. We'll turn back to uh, Mr. Marsh. Do you have any redirect? Uh, thank you, Chair Keen. I don't believe that I have any redirect. All right. Uh, recross, uh, Mr. Eisenhower. Just briefly, Commissioner. Uh, Ms. Schaefer, uh, Mr. Nicolay is a good attorney, Anna. I want to make sure I understand your answer on your recommendation. You're, you're not saying you would deny this permit. You're saying before you would recommend that to approval of the permit, you might require or you will require an MIT staff witness test and potentially a casing and integrity test. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. Uh, you're not saying deny this application outright. I am not saying that. Uh, and like I stated, otherwise, uh, the surface casing cement will have to be verified as well prior to that, that being either approved or denied as well. Sure. Have you ever heard of the Wal Walders Digital Library? Yes. Uh, during our time, and we've had plenty of it today, uh, would you be surprised to know that there's a Skelly Oil Company scout ticket dated October 9, 1943, that so shows that this was cemented with 300 uh, sacks of cement? I would not be surprised, no, because uh, I have also seen uh, Mr. Byers work over ACO one who states the same thing in 2003, so I assumed he got that information from somewhere. Okay, that's all I have. All right, thank you. Mr. Nicolay, any recross? I don't believe I have anything, Chair Keene, thank you. Okay, commissioners, any further questions? Commissioner Duffy? Yes, um, you've stated you've been in the job about a year. They're looking at making this um, well an injection well, hauling water, produced water there. Are you familiar with that, um, that part of an operation? I would say that no. I mean, I, I'm not for sure on, on how their operation is, on how they're getting their water there. Um, are you aware? Um, I believe one of the witnesses stated that, you know, potentially this could result in um, spills. Um, with your knowledge of the industry, are spills commonplace when you're hauling produced water and injecting it offsite? I 
would say there is always a chance of a spill um, during transfer. Uh, all oil and gas leases have that possibility. Okay. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you, Commissioner Duffy. I'm, I've got a weird circumstance here. Mr. Eisenhower, I want to ask you a question, and I'm going to ask it. It's really, sure. it's really unorthodox to, to ask counsel of a qu question like this, but you've thrown a, a potentially uh, major thing on the table. Uh, does this scout card reflect the cementing of the long string as well as the, um, as well as the uh, surface? Let me ask Mr. Reniker to hand me his iPhone. He uh, showed it to me here. I was certainly not smart enough to do this. <laughs> Mr. Who? I'm sorry. Mr. Reniker, that's Mr. Byer's grandson. And he's oh, the one okay. that does the work. Okay, thank you. Now you're gonna have to tell me, does it? <laughs> and I would be happy to uh, get an email cop uh, email of this scout ticket to everybody. Please do. Can I ha can I have him come in front of the camera and tell you what this means? Because it means nothing to me other than three hundred sacks of concrete. Do you have any objection, Mr. Nikolai? Um, not, not specifically. I would like to have a copy of whatever it is that we're referring to. Certainly. Certainly. Um, I'll sure. definitely send everybody a copy here. I'll tell you what, what yeah. Uh, Mr. Marsh, any objection? If it's okay with Mr. Nicolay, it's okay with me. Okay. Um, if he wants to get in front of the camera, I will swear him. Okay. Would you uh, please raise your right hand? Do you swear that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you God or under penalty of perjury? I do. Thank you. Tell us, please, what's on the scout card. All right. So I found, upon doing all this paperwork, you know, I filled out all the paperwork for this permits. Um, and if I didn't find it in a company record scout card or on Walters Digital, I wouldn't have, you know, put it on there. So I was pretty confident in that. I found a scout card that is dated from 1942 or 1943 for this Bowers well one, uh, Bowers number one well. And it talks in there, it's, you know, it's kind of hard to read because it is from 1943, but the uh, the notes and stuff they have in there, and one of the notes in there, they said they tagged bottom at uh, 3507 and they sanded back and then they ran in with 300 sacks of, uh, it says normal, I'm assuming this says normal cement. It's kind of hard to read the guy's uh, short lingo, but sanded back or went back with 300 sacks. So in this, it's dated uh, 9 29 of 1943. And also with this uh, Cunningham water flood unit, when we in, purchased this well in the 90s, we received just a large amount of uh, paperwork, everything for these wells from when they were originally drilled, uh, copies of a lot of stuff. So I, I actually have at the office just, you know, folders upon folders of paperwork for every well that was drilled, probably within a two mile area there. So I'm sure if I can't find it on the which watch Walters Digital, I can probably uh, find it there in our office as well. But correct me if I'm wrong, but as I understood you to restate what is on the scout card, it sounded as though you were alluding to 300 sacks of cement being used to cement the long string, not the surface. Is that correct? Correct. I believe that's. Let me reread that here. That would be long string, I guess, if it's 30, 3,500 feet. And then I indicate, and I could look through here some more to try to figure out exactly where I got the other number from. Okay. Here, Keith. Yes, please. And, and I, I guess maybe what I would suggest is instead of having us filter this through the lens of what Mr. Reniker is reading, perhaps we should just circulate this around and we can we can review it with our own eyes here. Not that I don't have any reason to trust Mr. Rineker or anything like that, but I mean, really what he's doing is, I mean, he's, he's, he's reading an out of court statement here. Nobody here were able to cross examine who compiled this information. And so I think that uh, the commission is probably the it, it best seat to, to review it themselves and draw their own conclusions from it. I, 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 I completely subscribe to what you've just said, and I share the concern as well. Uh, thank you very much for your testimony. I think, uh, Mr. Eisenhower, you can um, you can come back on screen now. 
you can you can supplementally uh, file whatever you think is germane here, and we'll we'll let that be subjected to uh, to um, answer by the other parties if they wish to do so. Okay. Um, this is why you don't do the unorthodox things. Um, but I I did venture onto some ice there. Uh, let's turn to our closing statements now, uh, and I'll begin first, uh, Mr. Marsh, with you, please. Yes, thank you, Chair Keen. Uh, I think staff's position is, to, would, is that we would request that uh, this application continue to be uh, processed administratively. Uh, if Apollo Energies is able to address staff's requirements, then the permit will meet the commission's regulatory requirements. If the well fails its MIT or there's any issues with the cement bond log um, that the operator is unable to resolve, then um, you know the permit won't be granted until that information is supp supplied or provided to staff's um, level of requirement. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Marsh. Mr. Nikolai. Thank you. Um, uh, well, commissioners, I mean, I, I think that the from the testimony and the evidence that was presented here today, we're certainly not in a position as of right now to grant this application. Um, I, I think that there are certain things that certain information uh, that that need to be gathered. There are certain tests that need to be conducted on this well in order to determine whether or not the application should be granted. Um, you know, as stated in our opening statement, it's it's our position that you know these are this is a well that has sat unused for a significant period of time. I think the testimony here is a little um, dicey as to the length of time this has sat unused, um, but suffice it to say, we're we're dealing with something in excess of of ten years now, where this well has remained unused, and Apollo Energy had a, had previously attempted to. Um, uh, apply to have this this particular well approved for temporary abandonment. Uh, Apollo, the the commission denied that application, gave Apollo um, an opportunity to rectify the situation, and Apollo didn't follow through in the time frame that was allotted. Um, I mean, these regulations and these time limits are put into place. Um, so we, we don't have wasteful endeavors. I mean, um, it, it, it's, it's a concern of ours that if, if Apollo is given another opportunity here to, you know, conduct these tests and, and eventually maybe get to a point where it can, it can have a complete application, we're not sure of what that time period is going to look like. And, and this, this well, and in particular, has been a burden on my client's farming operation. I mean, as he testified, essentially since he bought the property back in 1979, um, and so there needs to come a point where um, you know enough time has elapsed to do something with this, and um, the commission just decides, you know, enough is enough here. That being said. Um, we, we share in the, I mean, the concerns here with, um, you know, whether or not this, this particular well is even capable of injecting salt water in a manner that is safe uh, for, for the groundwater. Um, and so at a bare minimum, we believe that a, a casing integrity test would need to be conducted in order to determine whether or not that's even a, a viable solution. Um, but be that as it is, I mean, we would we would request that the that the commission review the application as it stands today, which is essentially incomplete, and deny the application. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Nicolai. Uh, Mr. Eisenhower, your closing statement, please. Well, as a municipal judge, if somebody spends four hours in my courtroom, I normally look at them mean, like, don't give me a long closing argument, okay? I've heard enough. But I want to cover two things. Uh, I will file supplemental uh, filing on the scout ticket. And we've had more than one, uh, and I, we didn't know this would come up, more than one reference to Apollo Energies didn't get this done in a timely manner. You were supposed to do this by certain time period. 
I will be filing an email from Michael Meyer to Josh Reneker on behalf of Apollo Energy to say, you have until January the 21st to do this. And it was done before January 21st. Uh, and we agree that whatever staff believes uh, Apollo Energies needs to do, whether it be a casing integrity test or a M and clearly an MIT staff super supervised, we will do that. Um, but we believe that the plugging of this well would do nothing to benefit. Uh, in fact, it would cause waste. And there is a chance that we will enhance recovery to the benefit of a number of royalty interest owners, including Apollo Energies as the working interest owner. So we would request that this application be granted or conditionally approved based upon Apollo Energies complying with whatever the Corporation Commission staff believes they need to undertake. Thank you. Very well, thank you. Uh, before we conclude, I want to see, uh, are there any, uh, we've, we've, several post-hearing issues have just been raised here. Uh, do the parties wish to file post-hearing briefs? I only, wish, I only wish to file the two, uh, two additional items I just mentioned. I, uh, Chair, I, I would like to have the opportunity, if, if, if you give me a time window to evaluate, um, I, I'm not guaranteeing that I will get one filed, but maybe just a deadline for getting it filed if that's a if that's an option. All right. Um, well, I'll propose that. I will propose uh, that it be uh, three weeks from today's date. Thank you. If any parties wish to file um, <clears throat> their post-hearing briefs, that would be the deadline. Mr. Myers, do you see any problem with that? Uh, sorry, again, with the delay uh, with my internet. Uh, no, I do not see a problem with that. Okay, very well. Commissioners, do we have any other issues? Commissioner Duffy? So three weeks, are we talking the 26th? Whatever three weeks from today is, yes. Okay, and we're not open, and we know that, right? That's correct. They can still file online, but we're not here. That's correct. Okay, thank you. Yep. Okay, very well. This concludes our hearing in this docket. At this time, we will close the record and adjourn. I want to thank all of you for your participation in the hearing. We're, we're grateful for the time that you've been wanting to spend this afternoon. Thank you and have a good day. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.